right, everybody. Welcome to episode five of the David Nassau Show. I am the David Nassau, and here we have Tashawn Anderson. And so, before, as I introduce him, you know, Tashawn graduated from the University of Florida in 2018 with a major in political science and a minor in innovation. His plan was to double major at UF and venture into criminal law. And after taking a gap year, he began to dip more into what I. Uh, into his uh, individual and drive to goals or where sorry i'm messing this up here into what he calls his individual driving goals into where uh one thing that is also held strong for him sorry uh, was his love to make and handle money apologize i butchered that sentence he started several small businesses and has uh has had business cards from his neighborhood lawn care car wash and dog washing gigs all when he started those at 11 and 12 years old Society says to trade in your time for freedom, go to school, accumulate debt, and then work a job for 40 years uh, until you collect retirement. But that just isn't the life for Tashan. The pandemic lit a, match, uh, lit a match under him and reminded him that no one is going to save him. It's going to be up to him to create his financial plan and, and, and ensure that he's stable. So after sitting on the sidelines and doing a bunch of reading here or there uh, regarding some investing, Tashan finally jumped off the porch on November 11th, 2000, uh, 2020, and began to put his money where his mouth is. While he is no expert, he has put, the, uh, put hours into researching, reading, and studying how the rich get richer. And furthermore, he's begun to teach his friends and family members how to maneuver their money and set themselves up for their future. The goal for Tashan is general generational wealth and to be the first in his family to uh, to pass along generational assets that and he's going to be doing it brick by brick so without further ado i'm going to pull you on screen how are you doing tashan thanks for joining hey man how's it going appreciate you having me thanks for the intro you hyped me up a little bit yeah, yeah. man hey very well written might i add right now so i i appreciate uh you taking the time to do that sorry i butchered a sentence or two there but you know you know obviously there's a lot to unpack just from your your bio right there maybe tell us a little bit more, little bit more about you and your words and you know what makes tashan tashan uh tashan um i think again thanks for having me i think uh my main thing is too man i think i just wake up and uh just try to be me you know i think uh grew up had a pretty good childhood but I, i've always liked things and 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 just life and experiences and doing things and uh like i said i'm the eldest of five so i was never uh the type of person i'd be like hey i'm gonna take off my siblings plate it's like at the you know at the end of the day like if i can make it that's hard on one person cool i'll do it and it's fun though, man. I learned just so much just as a kid, just kind of going out there and, you know, like I was like 13, 14 years old, like resodding people's front lawns in my neighborhood. And I had I'd never done it, you know, but uh, I, I have a lot of fun. And, and I think uh, I think a lot of a lot of the time people have just even like the smallest ideas. And uh, I think they, 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 they minimize them because they think they're too small or they think it's dumb. But man looking at just the growth that's that's impacted me even over the last year um since yeah since january this year to now and then you know to start a pandemic to now it's been honestly crazy to see just um just the growth that came out of out of something where people are really just freaking out so um i think the whole point of this episode is to say that hey i really didn't start with too much information i kind of did my own digging um you do go down some wormholes sometimes, you know, and you're just like, wow, okay. But at least you, you learn a lot, and uh, uh, it's just fun, though. I think I think a lot. I think people should at 26, like, I think people should invest themselves. Just take a chance, roll the dice, roll the dice. Yeah. So you know, let's start. You know, with your you know childhood, right? Tell us about your family. You said you're the oldest of five, so you know, yeah. it's a, a lot of siblings right there. Let to to you know be the. I assume people got a lot of people looking up to you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, it's so, uh, it's fun. The uh, the the youngest is four, and then the next close age to me is about twenty four. So we got a pretty pretty big gap. <laughs> um, nice, nice. But yeah, yeah, it, it's fun. Uh, I think. I think they're, they're funny too. They uh they teach you a lot about life too, and you you learn so much. I think that the, the biggest point where I, I told you in my bio that my goal is to pass down something from generation to generation. So I want to like learn it to the point where like, hey, if they have a question about anything, I may not know the answer, but I know someone that has an answer to it. You know what I mean? We can right. get it resolved, and that's how people build. And and uh, they're my inspiration. So I love all my siblings. So. 
That was fun. That was fun. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. Um, God love you. I mean, again, they're your family, right? You got to, you know, you got to love them. So uh, what about, uh, so with your growing up, right? You said you started some companies when you're 11, 12, 13, 14, like yeah. super young, right? Um, tell, take me your mind back then, right? Like was, what was the motivation there to just be out helping your community, but also having business cards as young as, again, like 11, right? You know, what was that like? What were your influences too? Um, my influences are just, are just honestly the goals and dreams I have in life. And I think, I think the best part about it, and I have a, uh, I do a small business now, www.hookedup.us. I like sure. to sell hats and beach bags and stuff like that too. And I was talking to my mom the other day and I was telling her, I was like, every time you hear like the little Shopify cha-ching, like notification, every time, I don't care like when it is, like I still get excited like I did when I was a little kid. And I think that that's really what it was. Like they didn't really want to sit around the house and do nothing, you know? So you get out like, hey, I got your grass, I turned to one thing and like, you get paid a wage and you're like, hey, okay, like, how can I scale this? How can I make more money? How can I, I think that, that aspect of it was, I think at that point, it was just such a juvenile thing for me that once you start like making it and you feel it and you feel your work, you know, you, you put in that energy, you just, you just love it. You know, I, I fall in love yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of the, do you remember starting your first business? Like, do you remember the <laughs> idea, like the thought of just like, I'm going to do this and I'm also going to charge people for it? good question um honestly probably probably those yard things you know i was like i was the eldest so i was cutting the grass anyway like i didn't have to buy a lot more i was using one of my moms you know but <laughs> when it broke i didn't have really money to fix it because i'm like young and just didn't know like save us you know i was just buying dumb stuff i'm like 11 right but um i did start learning how to fix those machines and i think that that that's probably the best part about it and uh that was probably that's probably the first and from there i, I always i always like cars and car guys so washing and detailing car cars it's just like asmr for me um nice. and then dog walking and stuff like no one wants to get up and clean up after the dog at six in the morning so it's like and i was a kid so i wasn't doing anything it's like hey but uh yeah that's uh those are probably the first first big ones i kind of just kicked it off and did it for a few summers and moved to like separate neighborhoods i dragged a lot more like on my bike with the gas and you know I think one of my greatest days I made 300 bucks in a day and I was like 12 and I remember like right before I'd eclipsed like uh, the 300 mark I was walking down this hill just going back to my place and someone drove on the side of the road they're like hey we just saw you uh you're asking to cut yards we want you to do ours like pay 30 bucks I'm like cool and I was that hit like the 300 mark and dude, I just like sat at home <laughs> I was just like it's count 20 it's like it's like the greatest day ever it's like uh I love it man I love it I love the accomplishment like you, you, you did something love that love that for sure it's kind of uh do you remember the do you remember the first thing that you bought like with that money that was just like the first memory of not only just making the money but like also spending it as well i was super into watches man and i still am like, I, 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 I wear a watch all the time you probably never i swear to you, you probably never see me not wear one um but that I remember I go to the Kmart around the corner from my house and I buy like a watch. It was like 25 bucks, you know, 30 bucks. I'm like, you look nice. And I didn't even have it fitted, but I was like, I decided when I like wear it to school. He's like, oh my God, it's a cool watch, yada, yada, yada. But I've always liked uh, like watches. And, and that was probably what I was spending my money on the most, like in, in the early days, probably stupidly, but I still have a lot of them that I bought. So it's like, each each watch tells a story each watch has yeah. its own oh, yeah yeah. Oh, yeah for sure and then uh what about any family influences right you also you mentioned you know your mom already you you know were there any types of uh influences you had with money growing up as well that you at least look to or or can remember good bad or indifferent right yeah um it's a good question i'll give a shout out to my mom um parents ended up splitting up for time and uh it's like, hey, Ann's got to meet. And she did a lot, man. She's had you know, travel agencies, e-commerce websites, she saw hair, she would do whatever it is. She was a realtor at one point, an author. So I remember I was telling her when I was first kind of doing my own thing with my, uh, my e-commerce business that uh, I remember as a kid, we'd go outside and we'd be selling like books a million, like right side of books a million, like selling some of the books she wrote. It's like, hey, 
this is where we're eating from today. So it's like, that's like the extra motivation. And you feel good when you've like sold a book to like a stranger, you know, it's tough for them to, because people, people work hard for their money, you know? So yeah. I definitely say my mom um, and my dad's military. So it's just like, hey, consistency, you know, like that's really, it's really the biggest thing, man. Just, just consistency. So both of them. Wow. Yeah, very, very cool. And also Memorial Day. So, you know, to all the, the veterans out there and people who serve and obviously respect. Um, but yeah, dude, and that that's it, it's de it's definitely uh, I mean, I don't come from from a, from a military background, but definitely being right. in, a, you know, from what I've heard and stories and other friends and, and people who, who do come from those types of backgrounds, like not only just moving all over the place, but like that, that not, yeah. you know, consistency is one way to put it. But again, it's just very just like hard here's what you're doing like you know very yeah. focused you know rigid 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 right yeah, yeah. exactly I so you. um yeah i hear a lot about that and then so when you kept growing right you know went from you know dragging the lawnmower around getting 30 bucks a yard ever to to slowly growing and building different businesses right then when you're looking into high school into college was there any like motivation there to, to you know what was the like looking at that obviously we both went to us so go gators but like what was that decision okay. like what was that path like for you as well uh that's a very good question it was uh it was crazy and i think what changed it all was in high school i think i was either a sophomore pretty sure i was a sophomore got my first car 2003 Mazda protege it's like starry midnight blue nice and uh this thing, it was in, it was in pristine conditions for it to be, you know, like I said, my dad was in the military, so he didn't drive it too much and maybe 50, 60,000 miles on it. So, um, and I think that's really what it was. Like, I, it's like, okay, Hey, this is, this is your asset, right? Like you want to get from point A to point B, like no one's going to help you pay for it. Like you got to take care of it. You got to license it and sure you got to like do. So that, that became the motivation. And then like, honestly, I said, I went, I went to the IP program in high school at the East side, um, shout out to East side and uh quarterback uh richardson's gonna be starting for us too pretty soon um don't know if anyone else is watching gator football but, um i don't know when i got in it was just like holy crap like because you know like when, when we went when i when i went to east side you drive by university of florida every single day like you have to get all the way out to hawthorne and even as a high school i was you know like the gators like from gainesville but um even even early on then or even in middle school as a fan i was i didn't think he'd be like oh dang dude i'm like like, man, I got you up. Like, that's awesome, you know? So we, it's, it's fun, man. It's fun. Did you ever consider other schools as well? Or was it just uh, like Gates yeah. Five? Yeah. I did, you know, I did cast my net to some, um, but again, U, UF is probably my favorite. It's, again, I, I, it's just a soul tie into it, you know? Yeah. I the heart of Gainesville, and I, I love, like, all the different friend groups you have, even through Innovation Academy, you know? Like, you, you, you see people that you know just from like the third grade and then you see people from college you see like it's just so you never know who you'll see you know it's always a mixed bag so that's interesting perspective right just like going out in gainesville just seeing everybody right there you know um it's like come on man <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the home depot like people are just everywhere <laughs> yeah 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 and then and then yeah and um we're also as well like with your with your siblings going to school was that something that like have were you inspiring them did they go to uf like are they looking to go to uf if they haven't been already because like, they're a lot younger than you obviously so you know is yeah. that are you like the inspiration like you know the gator guy in the room nah they all hate the gators <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of interesting because i do know a lot of gainesville people like students like high schoolers who are just like nah they're like they buy a lot i just have like two or three people who i yeah. knew back when i was in uf who were in high school that now they all went to other universities and like now nah, i'm never going to uf <laughs> i'm leaving the thing is like where where it comes time like hey i have free tickets to the gator games like i've taken both all of my siblings actually to gator games so that was another pretty cool thing that's why i like it was cool being from rounder because people would have tickets to games no i want to go to and it's like yeah i'll take them nice but um yeah if there's an event or a gator game they'll come out and tailgate have fun and rub the gator gear but um they're spread out all over the place um one's in tallahassee one another one's in games where my sister was here um another was in new york so they're spread out they're spread out um, nice nice and so yeah and then when you were in school so tell us about your journey you know changing you you know looking into criminal law right and then how you changed after is like what was that path and yeah. your mindset and what you were like what were your influences well saying like no like that's not for you and going different places 
because people feel like they're locked in when they have a major, right? Yeah. They're like, I need to do this. And this is, you know, a lot of anxiety. I think it got to a point where I was realizing like, Hey, I, I don't, I don't like sitting idle handedly. And, uh, I do appreciate college and everything and it works for people. And I do enjoy that. I went to like such a great university, like honestly, shout out to the Gators. Cause I, I really couldn't have ended up anywhere else better in the world. Right. Um, but I think that after I graduated and, and just kind of slowed down and, and thought about, I've always been like been a, an ideas person, like a dream person. I know that, and I'm sure, honestly, I probably could if I really put my mind to it. Um, just going to law school and then start trying to pursue it. But it's like, hey, I have a year's time and I started dipping my hands into a little bit of things that I'm doing now. So I'm glad that I actually like ventured out and didn't just go back and, you know, and who, who knows how the cards may fall. I, I can't complain. But yeah, it's, that's just really where it stands. Yeah. And so when you took that gap year right after you graduated, right, what were some of the conversations you were having with friends family and maybe even internally yourself right like there's a it's kind of a weird risk right you see all your friends going yeah. in like different ways you know what like what are, what is yeah. that take us through that and like what were you feeling in that that whole experience of deciding to go through the gap year i'll say that i'll say this a lot of people graduated like these past few weekends congrats all the graduates that's so awesome yeah. same people of doctors and lawyers and physicians and even teachers and everything, you know, people are right. people doing great stuff. So shout out to all the graduates. But I think uh, after I graduated, it got to a point where I was like, okay, I have my degree. Still have like this path laid out, you know, still have that option. Um, but I, uh, oh, I was working at Walgreens at the time. And that's what it was. And I just felt just, I don't know. I just felt like I was just wasting my time you know i feel like at, at the, i worked at Walgreens for like five years all the way throughout the college so and i moved around from everywhere like i started out in cashier and i went to photo lab and got certified via photo tech and went to pharmacy so wow. I, was like, I was always like progressing towards something but i just feel like hey like i gotta make some more money you know what i mean like i'm getting older like i'm, I'm a graduate now i think my, my long-term plan wasn't to stay in gainesville so it's like I gotta do something and i remember uh, like i said i love my gators man i i got had season tickets too one year like and i you know i'd work walgreens during the summer the whole time i was working 5 a.m sometimes i took all the shifts and people called out i didn't complain and had a a misspat with uh, a member of scheduling about me having the weekends off because i already had season tickets and long story short i was like well hey like if if y'all can't accommodate that, I'm just going to put in my two weeks because someone's got to give. Like I gave y'all months warning, you know, like someone's got to give. Right. And uh, they were like, hey, well, effective immediately. You don't have any more shifts. And I was like, you know what? All right. And I wanted to walk out. So I was so mad. But the manager I was working with that night was really cool. And I wasn't going to just screw her. I was like, hey, I'll finish out the shift and we'll go from there. But for like a month and a half, man, I had uh, I was just idle handed. And, you know, you're you just now I'm like. Dude, I got work. I have some little bit of reserve money to have, but it's like I I don't have anything coming in right now. So like, something's got to give. So I started casting a net, and that's how I got involved in my job with uh, insurance. Like I said, I was like numbers and just the language I can understand. And uh, I started out doing operations data processor, and it was all numbers, procedures, just a lot of interesting stuff. And uh, once I got a little taste of like what I could do and, and all the stuff I could do, even within a company. So like, okay, well let me try and map out what I want to do with the company and just start casting, you know, some nets. Like I've, I've been on like a commercial for the company. Like I've nice. like, you know, it's just like, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. When the opportunity, they sent an email and I was like, absolutely. I'll try. It was, it was awesome. dude. It was awesome. The famous but, man. <laughs> I, I want to see the commercial. I haven't seen it on TV yet. So when I see it on TV, I know, but, um, I, uh, I realized like, okay, this is this, I can, I can make, I can make my, my, my living with this, you know, and what else do I want to do now? So like, I know this will pay all of my bills for whatever I need to do. All, every, all of my stuff in the pot, it'll pay all that. Like if I need some more and, and, and to try and get something, uh, something that I can automate. And that's how it kicked in high gear. And then COVID happened and it's like, well, hey, like you can't really do anything. You're just at home all day anyways. So it's like, all right, it's time to do some real work, you know, and, and, and get right. And that's what that transition really was. So. So with, with that, uh, yeah, so you, during COVID, were looking at, you know, your current job, 
provided your base like needs covered and you're just saying look let's let's not only take this and start doing something new and start your own brand right your own company but also or at least build that can even more but you're also started investing at that point too that was mm -hmm. when you really started doing that but so before we yep. start going into really money and investing tell us more about your company right i know you gave a little shout out earlier like tell us more about your how you started that and what you're doing and like how if you if you want to right um tell us a story about how that started and your story of becoming that like a current entrepreneur and with your current venture right uh because i do <laughs> see you're always posting some inspirational <laughs> stuff every day right so you know tell us about that motivation to start the company and and tell us about it too um yeah i think uh with that i had old friend in college would make uh, certain like skirts and shirts and stuff like that. And we'll just wear them out. And when we go out, people would ask like, Hey, you know, where'd you get that from? Where can I buy it? Yada, yada, yada. And uh, she maintained that uh, she'd sell them one day, you know, and just, it just kept being something that she just say like, Hey, I'll sell these. Also. So one day I was like, okay, cool. Like, let's see. So I didn't know how to do it. So I'm like, Hey, I'll do the other stuff. You know, I'll do the marketing. I'll build the website, do photography and posting and stuff like that. Um, Long story short, I learned a lot in that year and I ended up launching again just separately so I can kind of just go to my own wave and, and do my own thing. And um, it, it's crazy too, because like one of the first things I was making were like headbands, I got crochet, like they're super soft on them. They're like velvet headbands and like keychain lanyards, stuff like that. Richard into making like wallets and stuff and then that transitions to bags, just all sorts of things and then you fast forward into today we're like now i have it where i'm making actual merchandise i'm making hats like wearing this nice but it is wearing it super soft man i never wear a shirt on under it full disclosure it's, it's, it's so <laughs> soft man um but yeah and the beach bags and stuff like that and um talking to a girl the other day i'm like dude it's crazy where a year ago like a year ago january 1st if you told me that by present day, like this is what like the hookup would become, it's like, okay, I didn't, I wouldn't have, you know, I just thought, honestly, I thought I'd be like just making hats for a bit, you know, so the whole like the stuff I'm doing with the merchandise stuff, all that, like it just, cause hey, I just took the chance and invested and just like threw out a line and it's like, who, who's, who's to say what'll happen in, in five years from now, you know? So with that right so you're all, you're on shopify you're doing the whole internet business situation do you without diving too much into detail right but like you start, you said you already know the material super soft you don't wear a shirt like i i <laughs> full disclosure had a whole bunch of shopify stores sold merch sold t-shirts and random like it was never with me but i love how for, how open you are with it do you uh what was the the x factor there to find to go into the shopify experience and actually look at some of the apparel that they have there the products they have there and thanks for the the like adam i appreciate it. we got some some engagement here appreciate so feel free to ask any questions or whatnot as well in the chat um i'll say the inspiration for that was that what you asked me the inspiration for it yeah the inspiration for the like the specifically going down like shopify and being able to i assume you know you don't stitch all these yourself. Do you stitch all these yourself as well? Okay, like, I what's got the, what yeah, so here's, here's what that. it was for me. Yeah. So I like to travel, right? And uh, it, it always just like grind my gears when I'm like on a flight somewhere and I get an order and someone wants like two custom beanies and I don't have any of my stuff with it with me because I didn't pack it to fly. And then my alternative is to like go to a store wherever I'm at, buy the stuff, make it, and then have to drink, you know. I got so sick of just doing that and trying to do it on your own. And a lot of the people that I study, they'll say, hey, the only way you'll ever become like financially free is if you can get your businesses to the point they're automated, right? Mm -hmm. So by having the print on demand, like, yeah, I'm gonna do a lot of the front, front work on the end, designing a logo, spent millions of gazillions of dollars, it seems like just testing different materials, just testing different sizings, just trying to pinpoint it. Um, but it's like, hey, after you get that, after you get that grunt work down, when I put it on, I was telling my mom, like, when someone when someone buys something, I just hit capture payment. That's it. And I got it set to, you know, all the cogs and the locks of on it. And it, it it's been it's been something I'm trying to transition to, to more towards because like once I get this to a point where I can automate it, it's like, okay, what's my next venture? You know, yeah. and that that's 
that's I don't know. I think that's I'm glad that uh, I'm glad I pursued that that path. You know. Have you done any of like the Facebook ads and any of those types of pay per click stuff? Yeah, man, they're tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're so tough. Um, and I know I still got some more work to do. I haven't gone in as heavy as heavily as I should have. Um, but I'll play with them a little bit, and uh, they're, they're it's still a work in process because that that's also gonna help a lot too with even my business. We're like, yeah, I'll probably still have the set things, um, my scheduled posts for like Instagram and stuff like that. But if I couple that with like all the Facebook ads jumping too, it's like, but that's a work in progress. I'm still learning. I yeah. haven't figured out. Maybe by 26, I'll I'll get that down pack. I got you. I got you. I'm gonna paste the link in the chat. It's uh, hooked up. Us right here, right? Yep. And so, so, yeah. so yeah, I just pasted that for anybody who's watching on Facebook Live with us. Um, pasted the website, but yeah, man, and good good stuff, dude. By the way, again, I love I love going through that process of setting up all the all the stuff on Shopify. It kind of is it's exciting. It's exciting, yeah. and uh, I'm glad that you uh, I'm glad that you did it and you're taking advantage of it, man. Um, I appreciate it. And so let's uh let's dive in before we uh, let's say before i'll give us a little minute before we dive into the number stuff here is there anything else that you wanted to add anything that was uh kind of important that you wanted to say to but like as, as far as just like letting people know more about you before we dive into your your money and numbers here no let's do it all let's right it. all right all right cool oh, i'm trying to wrong keyboard <laughs> so first we'll like... do yeah first we'll do i'll I'll, uh, I'll go into this view um we'll go into your monthly spending all right let's uh let's pull that up here and i'll go full screen for everybody and so um once this comes up on your end let me know and then i will i'll let you just like walk people through your monthly spending you know and and like what what okay. you're what these mean to you okay so i will say honestly to anyone listening trying to like be better with their money and invest and make smart decisions I'd recommend you, honestly, David, just putting this little exercise in a PDF and just either selling to people or giving away or something. Because honestly, it it's it's a lot it's a lot harder to do than people realize, and it forces you to be so honest with yourself. And I've been saying I need to do it for so long. I've tried to get better about like actually tracking it. But when you're telling, when you get like a set of instructions and it's like rounded off to the nearest zero, the nearest percent. It really does help you start to kind of quantitate things and and see really where you spend money. So I'll say awesome job for that because that was that was something I really had to sit down like, you know, in a desk. It wasn't something I just did in like five or so minutes. Right. Like being done, you know. Right. Um. But yeah. Um. So we start us off here. I said rents like twenty seven percent. Um. Looking to bring that down. Uh, we'll dip into it later, uh, yeah. a little bit later on, which is M1 investing and stuff like that. But I've just recently moved and I'm still spending between two different places for now. So, gotcha. and but I'll, that's, uh, I'll say sorry. real quick, I put in your rent and utilities together because I saw you broke that down into two separate things. Oh. So I just put that together here to 29% for everybody I who's watching. You. That was one small thing that I, that I just did because I've done it for everybody else before. <laughs> so I will say you said 27, but it was 29 for total, both rent plus utilities. So I'll, okay. I'll add that in I was going to say, man, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I looked at my sheet. I'm like, dude, wow, really? Okay, I need to look at these again. <laughs> Yeah, but um yeah. yeah i try to i try to not spend too much money on rent um i think my, my biggest thing right now is honestly just getting some sort of rental property you know because i'm living in st pete now and when it came time to sign a new lease i'm looking at houses and I, like i said i work in home insurance i'm looking at insurance homes all day anyway and i'm looking at people that are really making some some pretty good money on some of the places and even just the area is starting to pop off a little bit more too so i try to spend as little rent as possible honestly and 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 try to set that aside and you know every, like the everyone everyone every time you get a raise you want to upgrade the newest thing when you move out you want to do and like man i've been trying to just downsize everything i'm like <laughs> trying to scale <laughs> like one day at a time but that lifestyle it's, not, it's yeah it, it it's crazy it's crazy um so yeah there's that um and then i try and invest 20 percent that's a uh, smart growing rate. I think dropping down all of my other stuff, like my rent, my utilities and stuff like that, then it helps me invest a little bit more. But uh, I think when I was going through all of these things uh, all and breaking them down um, dollars and cents, I was like, I wanna be realistic with like what I know that I can like no doubt consistently keep up with, right? So I really started to actually like write down and excel it. And I was like, okay, cool. 
this is and it was good like i said anyone listening definitely do the exercise because that was awesome um yeah from there like i said i travel a bit so i spent a little bit on gas but thankfully i've, I've been working from home so my gas expense is pretty average i'll say that, that's it's not an awesome thing about working from home um internet insurance that's my car insurance um my renter's insurance and my health insurance as well so just try to bundle all that together and then a lot of my subscriptions i do have like some of the silly ones like i'm not even gonna say them because i don't i need them to sponsor me but uh <laughs> the, the one music source with the green circle and the black <laughs> so I, I do that. have a subscription to them. <laughs> I do have a subscription to them, but then a lot of the sub too are, are, are something I've built through like my Shopify or, you know, like my domain or through, you know, the monthly cost of this or on the website or my printer class. So that's, uh, that's more so what that is. And then you see, I said like leisure stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to do better about not eating out. And even tonight before I got on, I, I told you, I was like, hey, I cook dinner and I meal prep for the week too. I got something in the car pot ready to set. So nice. I try to, I try to cut out on my leisure. I try to cut out on that as well. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So very cool. And then, so yeah, let's, let's start. We'll kind of go a little bit piece by piece here. So again, we did, let's start with rent and utilities, right? So with rent utilities, right? Actually, you're doing pretty well, right? I think that there's a rule somewhere someone came up with at some point where it was just like, if you keep your rent or utilities, you know, all your monthly like housing expenses at or below like third, like a third of your income mm -hmm. monthly, like this is good. And this is all, I assume all this is post tax, right? Or like all the stuff that's being taken out of your resume, like all your money post tax, right? right. This is, Right, right, right. It's right. like when it comes to the meat and potatoes of what I can actually spend, it's like this is where I'm at currently. Right. And then is – is uh, bef kind of, and with your investing, is this also uh, anything – Is this does this consider what any employer – like any 401k stuff through your employer as well or is that separate? So I have that included as well. Okay. I've that included as well. Cool, cool. So beautiful. So with the the rent and utilities, I think again you're doing really well. And and St. Pete is kind of kicking right right now. St. Pete's growing. It's jumping hard. down here, man. Yes, one hundred percent. And so, I it must be crazy because I actually think St. Pete has got to be one of the biggest outside of South Florida, like biggest housing markets right now. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. when you're if you're looking at and again we'll get into the investment side about this before before like get into the investments later, but when you're looking at buying a property though, and you're looking at the low interest rates with your potential monthly mortgage, right? Are you, how close are they right now with the rents and your actual mortgage you might actually go in and, and try to buy with? Um, they're close, it's tough, it's tough. I think I think the, the problem that I'm having right now is like when, I, when it comes to me assessing that is that, okay, there are places where I know like, I'd buy this to be a good investment, right? But there, I know there are also places too that I like in St. Pete that I love living in, you know, or, or going out around. So right. when it comes time to do that, it's hard to try to really say, but it's it's reasonable. I'll say that too. Um, like I said, when it when it came time for me to um renew my lease and kind of get situated down here again, I uh I was like just looking at it. I didn't send out any fillers, I didn't call any realtors or anything like that, but I did look because I'll say one thing, I'm blessed to have friends around me that have recently purchased homes, right? Yeah. Um, within the last couple of years. So it's like, hey, I reached out to them too. We just sat and had a beer or sat and we were out on the beach one day and just actually just ask, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people, they think there's this super stigma about like asking about money. It's like that you yeah. just don't, but I don't know. I think if you have people that where people can just be honest with you and say, hey, this is something I don't truly understand. It's like, I have a question about, I'm thinking about doing this, what would you say? Um, it's doable and uh, it's something that'll be done pretty soon, pretty soon. Yeah. And honestly, that's part of the goal of the show is to normalize talking about money like this, you know, just yeah. like going through yeah. and, and having real conversations about that. Right. Um, and then so so with the investing here, um, again, you're doing a pretty good split, right? You Your housing is great. Right. That again, like out of below right. that third third of your income is, is really key so, from what i've seen uh on the internet and from what i've talked to with other people um with the investing right with 18 percent um out of that 18 percent, so again some of that is going directly out of your paycheck do you even see that or is it going straight automated some of it's just coming straight out of my paycheck 
um, whoever the IRA or 401k is. And I think that's, that's honestly, that's why when you ask me about these numbers, you're like, were they um, like crunched down to post tax? It's like, yes, yeah, post tax, it's post all deductions that I don't even see, you know? And I think the greatest part about that is like I did max it and it's awesome too, where that's not like a, a portfolio that I'm checking frequently. I'm, you know, I'm not checking that every day or every pay period. So when that time rolls around where I decided to check it, it's awesome just to see like, hey, this is money that I, people always say I don't have any money to invest, but at least like doing that. So I know if I see it in my account, I'm more than likely to spend it on something, you know, and it's like, okay, I'll let it do its thing at least. So um, yeah, that, that that's uh, that's really helpful. I like that it does that. So yeah, it's, I guess something that you just set up with your employer just from day one. And then all of a sudden you just forget about it almost. And then you look back and you're yeah. like, dang, that was a good amount of money. It just built up over time. Right. Yep. And, uh, D and, uh, again, we'll get into investing later. That's good. Tell us more about the, uh, leisure here. Um, with the leisure conversation, um, what do you consider, what, what, what fits into that category for you? Um, I'd say the, Hey, we're going to go play volleyball and I go play. And then it's like, Hey, we're going to go get some food at another restaurant who won't be named. Um, and then it's like, Hey, that's like 30, 40 bucks gone between food and drinks, you know, and that's one day of the week. What's all about five days a week. You're, you're just kind of in a hole. So anything like that, where, I just, I'm spending money. I was like, I just know I shouldn't have spent it or, but I honestly, I feel like I, I do a pretty good job of not just going out there blowing money. But even when it does happen, those occasional nights, I still wake up the next day. And I'm like, oh, man. you know, so. Yeah. So these are like, again, just your, um, basically allowance for yourself to just spend money on what you want. Right. And, uh, you know, yeah, like you axe throwing. I did that a couple of weekends ago. Gotcha. So it's like, I didn't need to, you know, it's like, but yeah. Totally makes sense. What is yeah, have fun sometimes. What has been some of your most fun leisure activity? Maybe actually it might be it, but what is what is some of your most fun things that you can remember? Like your favorite thing you did with leisure money? Um, it's a good question. Axe was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I'd say that. But honestly, man, I love just being down here, being near the beach, just beach volleyball. Like every time we go out, we have fun. We all normally I'm gonna bring a few drinks to the beach and then it's like, all right, we're gonna go get food. So that's probably fun because at least you, you do feel like you did something, you're working out, you're in the sun, it's still 700 million degrees here in Florida. So uh, I say that and I like doing, uh, they do a lot of boat tours where you hop on, soft, smooth boat and you're just touring around houses. And I love, uh, I love seeing things like that. Those are always fun. On the west coast of Florida, man, it's so, so beautiful too. Pretty. You get that sunset. You get all of most yeah, amazing yeah. soft, soft beaches too. Playing volleyball as well. Um, it's I fun. Was, I was just having my, a friend on uh, episode four. He's one of my old oldest volleyball friends in Florida. Man and man, just playing beach volleyball all day. Such a great, great lifestyle. Yeah, great lifestyle. Um, Car is just so dirty. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, and so. And then so with uh, insurance, right? Insurance isn't something that a lot of people usually like put it, especially in double digit right here. But obviously there's a, quite a bit of insurance that, that, you know, tell us about the different types of insurance you already mentioned. Um, and then, yeah, like, let's go let's start from that. So I do have my health insurance through my job. I do have my life insurance. I do have um, my dental insurance, my vision insurance. Uh, I do have my car insurance and then renter's insurance. And I think since I work in the insurance industry, I see just, you know, sometimes the worst, the worst. What might work for me may not work for you, what may, well, you know, and vice versa. But I think I like to, I know like the ins and the outs, you know, and I know while I may take an L in the short term, if the occasion happens, like I like to know that like, hey, it's, it's cool pay my deductible, I won't have to have any issues, you know? Right. So that stuff's time consuming, man. I, I, I'll tell you this one. My car got stolen right before the pandemic got started. Oh, wow. Which is awesome. Yeah. So, like, end of January. So I didn't have my car for all, all of February and, like, the first two weeks of March. And it's like, hey, I had good insurance. <laughs> I paid my deductible. And the entire month, I was driving these brand new, it was awesome, it was 2020 Dodge Charger. 
it's like sunburnt orange and you know what it made me say is like you know thank god i i um thank god i think i thank god i had the right insurance i'm sorry the stream paused for a second it just me out. I was like yeah it's i guess i'm having some some random internet stuff but I don't know. I'll try to close some of my old tabs, but <laughs> yeah, let me do that. Let's see what's going on here. A buddy of mine used to do video game streaming, and I was normally playing with him, like on his stream. So I'd be like in his chat, just like checking for him. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I, I I don't. Maybe it's just my internet today, but um, I'm the only one here that's actually doing stuff with it. So yeah, we'll 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 just figure it out, right? I don't know. Yeah, we'll keep it rolling and uh, the show must go on. Show, yeah, I think we're good. Like, we're, it's definitely live, but it's just it's cutting out a little bit. I'm gonna also gonna record it on my end as well. Um, okay. So we have that. That might tax my computer a little bit harder, but we'll figure that out. All right, can you hear me? I can hear. You. All right, perfect. All right, well, we'll we'll keep it keep it going. All right, so um, so yeah, so with the we were talking about insurance. Yeah. Beginning of the pandemic, you were driving around because your car got stolen in a brand new car. But again, things seem to be working out pretty well. And, that then, was awesome. and then with, uh, yeah, insurance is great. I assume you also have an HSA. You, you, I know you have an HSA. We'll get into that in a second. But obviously, that kind of covers uh, a lot of the health stuff that might come through later. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that's definitely pretty straightforward, too. So that, we'll, get, we'll get into that. Um, okay. Sounds good. Tell us about those subscriptions. I know that uh, without being sponsored, we don't want to say any name names, right? But you have subscriptions <laughs> for, for a music service you mentioned. And yeah. then I assume a big part of this, obviously, we mentioned them by name previous, but I mean, in order to run your business, right? That's got to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It is. They, are, they, they do come from business costs, you know, for most of them. But there are things that I'm like, hey, I like this. I know I'm going to use this. Like, I tried like a bunch, and you know, but I, I figured out the ones that I can make it work with. I mean, um, so does that. What was your decision with? I mean, so right now to break it down, you have a music streaming service, you have your website, so like uh, business subscription, right? Um, <laughs> what other services do you subscribe to as well? Um, some of the stuff that I do with uh, my distributors and stuff like that. Um, cool. It just pays better if you're on there on the monthly or the yearly than to just. So I do that. Um, and then even some of my editing stuff, like I use, I do a little bit of graphic designing with uh, some of the hats or whatever. So uh, there's that. But other than that, um, there's another one too. This one I will shout out. Uh, there's this guy on Twitter named Chris Johnson, and he runs this organization called the well squad and his whole motto is get money buy income and he has a discord that's uh 25 bucks a month like i said shout out find him on twitter i think it's cj johnson or chris johnson he'll come up um but he's honestly man i've learned so much through this last like year just through him and he's one of the reasons why i originally started like the, the initial business that i was doing before i rebranded because I was just up reading one of his tweets and he's like, Hey, you had an idea. You've sat on it for three years now, four years now, five years now. Like, just like, just like, just do it. Like, just like do something like start a list wow. and start. So yeah. So I will shout him out. It's the only free promo I do. Cause he's, he's awesome. He's got, I didn't know about M1 finance too much. And he's got just little things that I'm able to like teach you know, my mom about it and teach my peers and stuff like that. So shout out to him. Very cool. And uh, was he also a UF? guy i know chris johnson that was a uf guy mm -hmm. wasn't a uf guy i think he he's some guy in the military he lives in vegas or i forgot where he's from but he's uh i don't know him through uf, UF cool yeah 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 and uh how did you find him i i don't know i think just asking the right questions on twitter and that engagement and i think he uh he he had a tweet that someone retweeted and i was like hmm, okay that's kind of interesting i like the way he laid that out and I clicked him, clicked this page, followed this page, and just started going through and just reading his stuff and seeing his work ethic and just his habits. And honestly, too, seeing the way that he he talks about money, you know, he's speaking the way where it's more relatable to people. And uh, I, I follow his footsteps, you know, he, he sells ebooks. I started making ebooks. Um, just to try and, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of ways to skin a cat, you know, and uh, so shout out to him. Yeah, awesome, awesome. 
looking forward to looking them up a little bit later as well. Maybe you know what? Let's let's look them up now. Let's look them now. Let's see. Right, let's do it. Um, just because uh, I'm interested, I got you. I'll I'll, uh, I'll share with everybody my. Uh, you said cr Chris C H R S. Yep. J O H and Chris Johnson money. Just. Hang on one second. C Johnson seventeenth. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's hope that this is going to be all right and doesn't tank the, the screen too much here, the uh, internet, okay. but it should be fine. My goodness, so efficient. Boom. I uh, hope he appreciates this. Yeah, shout -out because CJ I'm, uh, underscore Johnson 17. 17th. Cool. So let's check him out on Twitter. Nice. Well, squad. Link tree. Let's check this guy out. So his he's got a YouTube channel. He's got courses. Got apparel. M1 finance. DeFi. He's into DeFi. That's interesting. Um, he says watches too. That's really where you made the connection. You're like, yo, you like watches? He's like, yeah, I like watches. He's like, All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm Weeble, listening. Affiliate. Yeah, earn fifty percent commission. Interesting. Uh, become an affiliate from his programs, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Where is his, uh, let's see. Come remember, interesting. Community that discusses generational wealth stocks, options, investing business strategy, more online community that will support and encourage. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty good. Pretty good. And so basically that's to gain access to the Discord that you're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, I mean, sure, dude, this guy is solid. Seems like he's, he's awesome too, man. Even with the wall squat thing, something where he pitched out the idea, said, Hey man, 25 bucks a month, you can get in. It's still just kind of bare grounds now, but Hey, the price would go up. I'll get up and running. And he got, I think he, he, he was at like 37,000 people last I checked at 25. Wow. He's, he's just grown a million and, and now his price is 40 bucks, you know, and it, but it's like, he just took like, all of like his whole tribe and all the people that he knows that, you know, cause wow. he does give out really good stuff and you know, you do learn just like, Hey, I can get more exclusive insight to what his trading habits are. I can learn more about options trading or I can, you know, I can, I can talk to more people openly and people that are both like are familiar with them. So they don't know what he's thinking or, 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 you know, and I think that's, uh, that's been crazy seeing he, he, uh, he bought a, a Lamborghini off the, uh, the AMC, swing he, he cashed out on just a brand new lamb and and, then, and now he's like and then he's flipped he's like hey and now i just ran out the lambo and it's like hey have your make your toys you know pay bills you know and it's just it just he does i like the way he thinks about money you know and i like the way he organizes it very cool yeah i see he's he, oh, he owns six houses <laughs> and uh sounds very interesting i'll look more into him very cool good uh good shout yeah. out right there and uh he'll do a challenge on his twitter where it'll be like hey find me a house i'm looking to spend between 180k or 200k whoever finds me the best house best value for that i'll give him 500 bucks and i just you know it's awesome it's like it, you, you feel and get engaged and he does pay up you know it's like so follow those uh check out those tweets <laughs> um i mean i'm not even an affiliate for him either you know it's like Dang, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah, it's always cool to learn about some uh, some new people and uh, and see what see what see what they're doing. This is very cool. Very cool. I appreciate the shout out for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's get back into this, and uh, we'll we'll take a uh, share other stuff on the internet if uh, if needed. But yeah, that was very cool. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's the, the uh, subscription stuff, and so that's cool. Do you uh, so that would be a subscription so any any other subscription mm -hmm. conversation as well that uh that you want to have is that that comes to mind uh xbox live nice probably the only other one nice, like nice. i just but i don't have cable so it's like um i do use it for everything else i need you know i have like my little tv antenna like i don't so but yeah my xbox live normally does everything else i needed to do yeah so there's yeah. that that's, that's probably cool. the last one i could think of nice any games in particular you like um, just Rocket League and Fortnite. So, yeah, um, Rocket just, League and Fortnite. Yeah, hey, good, good, good games, man. Good yeah. games for sure. You can rage in either, but you have fun if you're playing with a friend. So it's yeah, like... <laughs> get beat by some twelve-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. It happens. So, um, 
then yeah, let's go in and talk about so for food, food is primarily you know how do you describe that just like straight up groceries or is that also some you yeah know, just too? groceries gotcha. just groceries i put the leisure stuff into uh or eating out to like leisure stuff gotcha. more but yeah. when it comes to just like what i'm doing for groceries i've tried to really like actually just keep receipts and just add it and just see so i know like because it does make you more aware too of like what you're actually buying if you're at least mm -hmm. indexing and you're not just crumbling up and throwing it in the trash like i normally do before you know it's like okay cool <laughs> for sure for sure and then what about um do you ever figure like have you ever tried to use any budget like monthly budgeting tools as well that like are some internet-based applications or phone apps um the only one that i'll say i'll use is this one called digit and honestly I will, i'll shout them out too because they it saved my behind like more times than I can remember where you link it uh, to your bank account. What it does, it looks at your finances and it sees, you know, because you're going to have a lot of things that are recurring, right? And a lot of times so your income is going to be pretty consistent month to month. So it'll take out a fraction of what it believes that you can save for the day. And you can cap it to, I don't want you to save more than a dollar a day, you know, but um, you can uncap it and let it do its do or do what it does. And I think that's probably the only thing that's really been beneficial for me because again, it's the same thing. You, people say they don't have money to invest, and I've let it sit. And you you look and you're like, I didn't even notice that money was gone. So definitely do that. And they have referral links and stuff like that too. You get five bucks if you refer someone. So cool. Yeah. So basically, you're saying with Digit, they'll just analyze your using machine learning and financial best mm -hmm. practices to calculate smart amounts to save and invest each day. So it'll automatically just just take it out. Just take it out. You know what it is, too, man? A lot of people aren't checking their bank account every single day, right? Yeah. Especially too if they're like going out and partying, you know, like you go out on a Friday, you go out on a Saturday, you go out on well, I hope you're not going on Sunday too. But if you do it happens, yeah. Every but, day. <laughs> every day. By the time you check your bank account Monday, Tuesday, it's like, oh man, like that could have gone somewhere. So at least if it's gone before, you're 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 you're, so, you're gonna be more aware when you're also spending money too. And at least you have that buffer in the background, it's just running. Very cool. And Ty, did you hear about Digit? CJ. <laughs> CJ as well. Nice. 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 And he's, so he called up, he's doing a challenge called the Hidden Money Challenge. So at the beginning of the year, he said, Hey, here's my referral link. I want everyone to do the Hidden Money Challenge for me for a year. So that just run in the background. Don't touch it for a year. At the end of the year, let's see what it does. And it's like, all right, cool. Let's do it. Like, so we'll see uh we'll see where it's at or it, yeah, yeah where it's at by the end of the year but it does it tell you how much money it saved you over time too or how much money it's for so, saved you so if you go into the app it'll tell you you can you can access it and you can take the money out and withdraw it back into your bank account you know if you want to do like the day or two method it's free if you want to do it instant they charge you some fee to do it instant um, but yeah, it doesn't give you a notification every day. Like, Hey, we saved a dollar today. We saved $2 a day. It just does it to sleeper in the back. So that's why, like I said, by the time you check it, you're like, I didn't even realize I was saving money this entire time. Wow. Very cool. And it, it does, it, it is like you said, $5 a month as well to, uh, mm -hmm. to do it. Very cool. Very interesting. Another, all these tools, man. Very cool. Very exciting. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. Um, Cool. So with that, let's uh gas, right? So gas, I guess, is a necessary evil for just commuting, but um, that just makes sense. Anything you want to say about your gas budget right here, five percent? One thing I want to do is uh, actually join one of the gas reward thing because it's like you're gonna have to get gas whether it's two dollars a gallon or five dollars a gallon. It's just not necessarily evil, like you said. So I might as well get something out of it, you know. Yeah. I want to do that. I want to look and to see which one is like the best one to do, or where they have the most stores. So have you ever looked up like anything like uh, when you go shopping for gas, right? Um, I know Google actually does a decent job of this now, mm -hmm. but basically, it kind of will show you the prices around town. And do you have any preference to like which which gas company, which like, gas stations you go and and get gas at 
So I get guys that all the ones I have stock in. <laughs> ah, there you go. That's, there you go. You're thinking, that's the meta game right there. Yeah, that's so funny. Chevron, Shell. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I go to, yeah, the ones that I own, of course, too. But uh, I do go convenient sometimes, too. If it's something right here and I get charged an arm and leg, so be it. But I might as well make a little something off of it, you know, right? That's fair. That's fair. Hey, you know, that's uh, an interesting that's an interesting setup. That's an interesting conversation. Yeah, that's that's really funny. Um, <laughs> I never, I never, I mean, that makes total sense. That's awesome. Yeah, I, mean, right? I know like... people, yeah, <laughs> might, might as well, right? Wow, very cool, very cool. And uh, do you, do you know much about like different types of gas that they have it? Like, I, I honestly, I don't know. I always look at like Chevron and Shell as like really high quality gas, but I also don't know like what is Valero and like, you know, Racetrack and others. It's, all the same to me i have no idea i just know all the guys on youtube with fast cars use the racing gas there's some extra in that but other than that i i couldn't yeah i couldn't touch chevron <laughs> with techron or something like that you know? yeah i don't know what like, that is but i'll have it yeah i drive up to a gas station based on like hey, how nice does the station look are the pumps well lit does it look like i'll be able to get some gas can go yeah <laughs> or am i gonna be scammed uh, and this is gonna yeah be right uh, come on have some credit card skimmers right here yeah uh, <laughs> what about the uh miscellaneous here you have three percent i feel like there's still something i'm forgetting you know yeah. and so i'm like hey i'll attribute all that to that or just random stuff in life happens that i'll randomly spend money yeah. on something and it's like all right it's just yeah. i don't know i just feel like i have i just i don't know just a, a big a big catch-all basically for, yeah uh, yeah yeah everything else i miss i know there's some some leakage or some seepage mm, yeah you know? so there, there's a, a term in the bar industry called uh shrinkage and it's a term okay. I'll, I'll never forget because it's just like a random name but like, yeah shrinkage and uh shout out to a company called partender in gainesville that you know then let, let open my eyes to that term because apparently there's like again it's it's, it's when your drinks your inventory just goes missing and yeah. you don't know what <laughs> happened and so I just like yeah I, I for some reason i guess that term is, is shrinkage and it could be because your budgets are are over pouring and all of a sudden you know you only thought you sold five you know drinks but yeah you, you know it physically looks like it's like seven so there were two drinks there that were that strengths at some point of your inventory um <laughs> so um so you got some some shrinkage there accounted for and there you so go. um yeah with that you know I think this does your great breakdown of your, your monthly spending here. Is there something else that you think that you missed that we didn't talk about already that you're, uh, that we didn't cover yet? Mm -hmm. Not at the top of my head. Yeah. I I mean, phone is 1%. So, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. I, I assume like, you know, just straight up paying for your phone. Right. I said I pay 35 bucks a month, unlimited hotspot that's it and like i said i have people that also are in business too so a friend of mine um some cell phone business anytime i need a phone give them a call and i just buy the phone and fool outright i'm not in any kind of you know and honestly too you know that some from when i was a kid like my parents never bought me a phone so that's another thing that when i started making some money it's like cool i had a phone you know you get charged for the minute at that point and you gotta like call out the nine and stuff so I've always liked the freedom that like having just a prepaid phone, you know, provided me. And uh, yeah, it, it just works. I can just 35 bucks. It's consistent and. Don't need to think about it. No, nah, um, no, no, no. With having, you know, the hookup and with doing your own business outside of, you know, your full time role, are do you account for any of those expenses as business expenses as well mm -hmm. i do and one thing that i'm really trying to actually get on a better track of now that i've finally gotten all my trips out the way uh, all the moving apartments that i need to do out of the way is just getting um figuring out which of those companies or which of the banks stuff like that will do will offer you the best rewards for your business you know and then tightening all that stuff down too um that that's really where i'm at now and i know now i'll have some time this next month to actually do the same sort of thing like this to sit down and put it all to the dollars and cents and and then yeah do you uh another question is with all these expenses do you typically put it all on like a credit card or a debit card 
Uh, normally a credit card, keep all my receipts, inventory, everything, pay it off, um, and just do it through like a business account that I have situated. Uh, but like I said, I'm now trying to see like, hey, is this business account the perfect business account for me? You know, and I'm going to start right. calling up there and asking some questions, you know, and, and either I'll find a better one or, or I'll be able to leverage it and get something out of it, you know. 100%. So that, that's just where I'm at at this point. Yeah, yeah. And then for personal spending, all right, is that do you usually do that on credit cards as well? Or do you also have um, debit cards for that? Normally debit, normally debit. Interesting. One thing I am going to try and do more, though, is still using um, the credit aspect of it just for points as well. And same sort of thing, just see where I can max out um, my thing. Because like I said, I have Wells Fargo, it's my bank. And, I, you know, UF was really, that was the they bank just, of they UF. Just so, you UF. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm like, well, hey, um, dude, I have a couple of the bank accounts that I used to. That's what I said. The one that I really liked was PNC. Uh, I had a car finance to them. And they were just awesome people, awesome bank. And I would have them down where I'm at now, but they don't have them. And I don't want to have to go to another city <laughs> a couple right. hours away every time I need a bank. But I'm really trying to look at, look into seeing like what, what, what are the better options and not just being with the bank forever because I'll bank with them forever. Right. With uh, your the debit and credit card options that you're, you're doing, uh, Obviously, with, with credit cards, the times you, you've used that, do you tend to pay them off in full? Do you ever carry a balance? I carry a balance on some, but I try to I try to just pay them off in full yeah. and, and, and just not have to worry about it. Yeah, I'm going through this period of my life now where I'm really trying to just pay off all of my debt and, and stack, you know, and, and, and elevate and invest more and not have to worry about, oh, I got to pay these people. 50 bucks a month or whatever. I'm, I'm just trying to, and that's why it's helped to really break it down to where I'm spending and where I'm investing my money. Because it's like, hey, just pay on it, be consistent, and it'll be gone, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, like those, those I ask, obviously, like the interest rates, if you carry balances, can be somewhat mm -hmm. intense, and sometimes that's where, you, that's where you get dangerous with those holes yeah. and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, People don't realize get, that. But they get you with those credit cards, right, with like those uh offers when you sign up you know it's like you go signing offers where it's like get 500 get 2000 whatever and then they get how many points and ridiculous stuff right um it's like 60 percent apr like do what <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> but you know have you heard of any um or have you looked into any uh debit cards that actually now offer rewards for purchases on debit cards hmm. I've, I've came across a couple i'm not sure if you know of any Mm -mm. Not like they go. Yeah, I know. I actually just got one, which is why I ask, right? Um, and okay. yeah, I'll, I'll send you the details if you're interested. But yeah, the okay. uh, yeah, I I first got interested in them uh, because I had their savings account. Do you have any specific with your banking? I assume we're. I think the next slide we have, or in the net assets, we do have savings and stuff we'll get to. But do you usually right. have like? I assume you have ch savings accounts and checkings accounts. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I had a high yield savings accounts with a, a bank. I actually use I've, in every episode so far, I've had their links in the description for like affiliate stuff purposes mm -hmm. as well. But like high yield savings accounts with Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Um, and dude, they, they're, they I'll show you them. They, uh, their debit cards actually pretty mm -hmm. legit that I've, I think I just have it right here. Um, literally, I just got in the mail, but I started using it electronically. But it's like, uh, ten percent. So they they do like a lottery system too. So the more you save, the more you save, you get tickets for a lo a lottery. So every twenty five dollars you have in the savings account, you get a ticket every week to a lottery that can then win up to ten million dollars. Um, then you have like a Tesla, and then it's like a couple thousand dollars like every rung below it. But yeah, and so every time you you spend ten dollars, you get an extra ticket towards that week's lottery. And so it's pretty cool. Um, I've definitely, I'm excited because, and every, you have a one in 500 chance to get the item you just bought for free. Huh. So, <laughs> yeah. And so that's just kind of, kind of interesting. So. Have you won any, how long have you had them? I, I just, just I them just, in? yeah, I've only made like maybe seven purchases on it yet, but I'm in a, a WhatsApp group with a whole bunch of people, including like the CEO hmm. of the company and people have won nice. like, you know free lunches, movie tickets, couple 
hundred dollars worth of whatever else they bought. I don't know. There's one dude who won like three hundred dollars on one purchase. And I was like, I don't know what you're buying on a debit card for three hundred bucks, but good for you. So do they have uh, an affiliate link for it as well? Yeah. Or no? Um, I I don't know about the debit card, but I look into that. But for the uh -huh. high yield savings in the description here of my 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 stream, but yeah, like they 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 definitely I'm sure are. They, I, I, as far as just rewards, debit cards. So short answer, yes, they have affiliate links. I'll send you one and whatnot too. <laughs> but, um, but I, yeah, it's probably, in the, I think it's in the description of my the video. But rewards, debit cards. If that becomes a thing, I think credit cards are going to be in trouble a little bit for people yeah. like us who are analyzing spending. Because the only reason why I have credit cards, I, I mean, I pay off as much of like all my credit cards as possible like every month but mm -hmm. if i'm able to get rewards with debit cards from savings accounts that are giving me interest on my savings you know yeah it's kind of intense you know money makes money yeah, you don't gotta exactly. spend any crazy you know amount per quarter or whatever they... right 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 they do have the incentive if you spend like what uh two grand in the first however many five whatever months then you'll get an extra thousand tickets right but if each hmm. ticket you get is a 25 dollar ticket then if you were to just have the cash it's kind of an interesting dynamic anyway i have to check it out I it's it's, it it's out. interesting i'm yeah i asked just like if there are more reward debit cards if that becomes a thing that would be kind of hey, we'll see. Like, yeah. hey you heard it here first yeah that'd be super cool i'd be super down to try more reward debit cards because that sounds awesome um and it sounds just, it's, yeah, great idea. Um, sure. And so, so with that, I think let's, uh, let's, we already see every, every, you know, here in your monthly spending, we already have investing, we already have some, um, you know, rent and we're, we, ha we have some areas that we can already see that you're already looking towards how you're putting your money to, to work for you. Sure. Um, let's start talking now about your monthly investing and we'll see really uh, how, you're splitting up your your finances every month. So here, uh, again, when it comes up, we have real estate and your M1 funding. We have cryptocurrencies and stocks. So walk us through here to let us know more about how you look at these uh, and how you look at them when you're, again, you're going at it month to month. And this was, I think we submitted this in like, again, just last month, which was a right. couple days ago. So yeah, May. So I'll say, like I said, I, I bought my first stock back in November, right? And from there, for pretty much the first little bit, I, I honestly can tell you, first couple of months, maybe I was just buying stocks, buying stock companies I like, buying, just doing research, seeing things that were kind of in the grapevines that I may have been interested in, and, and just, and that's really what kind of got the ball rolling, you know? And then, you know, I did a little bit of crypto too, just seeing stuff like Dogecoin, like all the memes and just like, it, it, it was funny to watch like the whole uh, uh, thing with GameStop and just watch it like play out in real life. Just, I remember as a kid uh, in I think the sixth or eighth grade, we did an experiment with like a stock market challenge, right? Um, with our class and the top three people got to go out to dinner and then like the top bottom people also got to go out like, you know, so like it, they incentivize it and the so winners like, hey, and the losers yeah it's bottom three it's like so it's like okay because now it's like it's it's hard to figure out how to lose too you know right, like right. so it's like okay so but like to see it play out in, in in real time and see what the indications are and and go from there i was like okay kind of doing that a bit and then like i said cj had mentioned the m1 finance thing where a lot of people are going out to like i told you a lot of my friends are going out and buying houses and Stuff like that, people buying cars, and you know, when, when you're doing that, a lot of times you're going to some sort of mortgagee to get the upfront money. Well, with the M1, what it does is you you invest the money into it, and you're still they build like pies like this, right? And you can say whatever the sector is, you can have it do it in an S and P, you can have it do you build your pie you want. You can even take one of the pies that they have set up and start from there, or copy it verbatim. It lets you do whatever it is you want to do. Um, but you invest your money and it used to be once you hit $25,000, you can borrow um, up to 35% of your entire portfolio. So from $20,000 enough, you can take 30, 35%. You don't have to ask, they'll put it in your account because it's your money. And I think the interest rate on it is one, one to 3%, but something crazy wow. where it's like, okay. And you know what it is? Like 
it's it's your money and it's not pulling out any of your investments. So CJ was saying like, hey, you have an idea, you pull from his portfolio, buy a house, have the house pay out and pay all the back and out, you know, you're up. So hmm. once I started thinking about that, I, I told you I've always been entrepreneurial in spirit. And it's like, hey, I'm always thinking what's next, what do I need to buy, what software can I buy, what can I, you know, what can I do more to like speed things up a bit, right? And like my, my next little thing that I'm going to be doing are just vending machines, man. I was at, I was at Gators. I'll say Gator stock side, I go Gators. But I was there with my mom, my grandma, little brother. And, you know, someone had a vending machine with a game. And my brother's four. So he wants to play. He doesn't understand the concept of these are big. So he's like, you know, I think at least maybe three bucks. I'm like, so they got three, three bucks off of us and like, a minute it's like imagine you just sit that all day and so yeah like hey i, I take that in one i can hmm? so when you're saying vending machines you're talking about like the gaming machines like the game i'm thinking more so just like sodas oh uh, okay okay you know because i'm outside on the beach all the time and, and another thing too i want to do is like people are talking about rental properties too i want to buy parking lots because a lot of, yeah you can buy a nice house in Pearl or st Pete beach but dude these parking lots i went to the beach the other day it's 30 dollars to park it's just like and they don't have to, you don't have to upgrade the grounds, you know, it, it, it's, yeah. it's like, I like that I'd be able to have the capital to like start something like that. I, I'd be borrowing it against myself and my investments to still go and exceed. And if it's something quick flip that I'm doing for, I can take that, pay it back, reinvest the pot, refresh the deck and start over. And I'm not at the mercy of the bank for, hey, what do you, what do you think I'm worthy? What do you, my credit score is this, how can I do that? You, be, you become your own lender. And it's your investment that you're levering where instead of having your money sit in your bank account, your bank, man, you put in a hundred bucks, your bank converts it to a digital number. They invest that like the next business day, you know, and why not do the same? Be, become your own bank. So become your own bank. Your, let me get this right. So what this guy's doing, what he's talking about like M1 is basically he'll put in, let's just say for all intents and purposes, a hundred dollars. All right. Well, it has to be over. In order to take out, you have to have everything over a certain amount of money, right? You said it over twenty. And here's, oh, and I think it, I forgot about that. Yeah. It used to be twenty thousand dollars, and within the last month or so, they marked it down to five thousand dollars. And they said once you hit five thousand dollars, you can borrow up to thirty-five percent of it at this interest rate. I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah. yeah. I use them one. Um, I also think I might have one of their affiliate links in the bio as well. I don't remember. Um. But I do use M1, okay. but I never thought about. I never, I never look into lending stuff like that too. Nice, yeah. Let's uh, let's yeah. look into this. Let's uh, let's let's share the screen. Uh, bam, and bam. And they do referral links too, so you get There's 30 some bucks questions for, referral. for you guys. But here, let me bam over here. So um. Yeah, so here it says so borrow up to five thousand dollars with zero percent interest until June thirtieth. So that's just this month. Um only only two percent after that when you sign up for one year. Oh yeah, the M one plus is their premium model. Mm -hmm. Um build more, worry less. All right, wait, yeah, so hold on. So the lending tool specifically is what I'm into borrow. So Flexible line of credit at a low rate. Borrow against your investments at a two to three and a half percent. So it probably changed it since you probably looked at mm -hmm. it first without extra paperwork. So M1 borrow available on margin accounts with a balance of at least five thousand dollars. Not available for retirement custodial accounts. That's fascinating. And that five thousand dollars recently used to be twenty. Like when I when I first started it, it was at twenty. So that's like. Oh, well, it's so, hey, up to $5,000 with 0%. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me understand this. So bar, bar up to 5K with 0% interest right now. So again, it's like, realistically, I can buy something on five for $5,000 in full with 0% interest and then just pay it back by the end of the month without having to pay any interest. Like, that's but scroll down, scroll down below. And you see, that's just a promotion thing that they haven't going on now. Right, right, right. That's so fascinating. I'm gonna look more at that. So borrow up to 35% with rates as low as 2%. Say that one more time. Whereas you borrow um, 
up to 35% of your portfolio's value with rates as low as 2%. Right, right, right. As low as 2%. So yeah, and then, I mean, this is true though. I mean, you look at some of these different percentages, it is kind of crazy if you're able to borrow these at 3.5%. If you do have enough money to put down for like, again, like a house, and if you just have that cash randomly, but like not cash, like invested in your M1 plus portfolio, then technically you can just buy a house. Mm-hmm. You're your Lino essentially, right? <laughs> It's but like if you or not, you're but I'm trying you, to you. think of where, where, and I'm probably not going to do it like right now, but like, where's like the catch with that, right? Like if let's just say I have, uh, again, I, I borrow a hundred dollars to buy a house f flat out, but I'm still my mortgage rate ends up being 2%. That's where it is. My mortgage rate ends up being 2%. Um, interesting. Yeah, but it's still paying, paying back to M1 at that point. While your investments are still making money is the, the cool thing about it, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So if your money in M1 crashes, then you're kind of somewhat... Well, you've already taken out the money from the original investment, right? So like... That's There probably you go. fine, but it's it's really interesting to think about. Mm -hmm. It's still kind of risky, It is. but if you're able to be confident with the, both what you're buying going up and your invested Right. amount going up, then you're kind of okay. But you need to have that amount of money to be able to buy to take out and leverage. Right, right. It's like for that, like that down payment on the house. I would say would versus like the actual house itself. But again, that's just still. And interest on interest. That's kind of crazy, man. That's It's kind interesting. of. And hey, you know this too, it's just deferred to buy. Hey, I got this and it works over here doing this thing. I got, you know, It's just, just, it's, just. it's leveraging. Yeah. You're, you're just, you're just hoping that what's a maintenance call. Uh oh, if your account value drops below the equity value, or if the account value drops so that your equity value is below the maintenance threshold. So we need to understand what that maintenance threshold is. M1 will issue a maintenance call. The maintenance threshold is normally 30% of your account value, but M1 may impose additional restrictions. So that's that's the risk. If the stock market crashes, that's the risk. Like you just can't be mar. It's basically margin calling, but they're calling it maintenance call. Like they're basically making sure, like, hey, if some crazy You're not stuff just happens, gonna borrow all this money. <laughs> yeah, You're you need good. to be careful right there. That's kind of crazy. But anyway, yeah. Very interesting to be able to do this on money you're already invested with and then have being able to pay back while your investments in theory are still going to go up. And still Um, collect dividends on it and, and all that. yeah, And yeah, interesting. you know, if you're investing in stuff that's 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 decent or Right, that's that right, on its own, like you should be okay. If you're out there acting wild, by all means. <laughs> right, and hopefully you're taking the money out to buy assets that are making you money. I ultimately, It's gonna make you something quick. Yep. right, So you pay that back, and now that whole TV right, business is doing right, its thing. right. Like it needs to be again, like a, a flip or something that's you're able to put back really easily without having to worry about that being called out. So Yep. that's interesting. That's fascinating too, Valoro. Yeah. Um, cool. So let's, let's go back into the monthly investing thing as well. Um, because that is, that is fascinating. M1. Um, I never really looked into too much of their, uh, their, platform uh, just the pies, but not the oh M1 borrow. Um, M1 yeah borrow is something that I never, I don't really look into a lot of stuff like that. That's not my, it's good to learn about. That's what I'll say. It's good I got to know you about, but it's something that's especially something if that you got I've, an idea man yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I like still have I said one, it's I'm your money that's there anyway and yeah. the banks do it and I just hate letting the banks like do what they want to do and then it comes time where like I have an opportunity, I need to, you know, and they're like, oh, well, we don't know if this and we don't know that. And I don't, I just don't like being helpless in that situation. And, you know, I'll take the risk knowing that, hey, when push comes to shove, like, hey, if I got the money there, I got it. And that's Right. kind of where. It's crazy. Yeah, might as well. Might as well. I mean, it's just the a, a, leveraging yourself and you just got to be careful with that game is really, I guess, what it Yeah. is at the end of Yeah, the day. As yeah. long as you're feeling confident and you're not over leveraged, because again, once they pull that maintenance call, that's your big risk. If they pull that and you're not ready to pay it back in full, you know. 
that that's the. You know what it comes down to, man, is just doing your research, y'all. That's yeah. really it. If you can't sit and ask questions on the internet, you gotta at least put your put your nose in the book and yeah. know what you're doing. Because with with everything, M one, the stocks, the, yeah. the all that, like it. So with that, so again, seventy percent of what you're doing it goes into M one, and then you also have real estate here. So explain. So tell us more about that. So the real estate slash M one. Um, uh, oh, um. That was me saying I put it towards M1 and transition that into real estate. Gotcha. gotcha. So it's more of okay. this, these are all kind of fluid percentages, but um, yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm trying to say. Because I do want to have a property of something of some type where I can, where I can make some money. Got it. Here. Got it. So right now, this is really M1, and then hopefully it's going to also be used towards, like you're you're investing this to be yep. investing in real estate. Understood. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. And more crypto, more stocks, more whatever it is that I've decided yep. to buy. So but at least I have a line of credit for myself and I'm still going to be doing everything in the background, increase my cash flow through the hookup and it's like it, it all play together. Do you manage your M1 portfolio yourself as well? Or do you, I assume, do you also take input from uh, Chris Johnson and other people and like what to put in your pies? So I don't think I've seen him actually post anything that he, he's had. Um, I normally just go with the companies I like. And like I said, one thing I do like is you can set certain goals for um, when you go into it and they'll give you some certain pods and you just kind of pick and choose what you like and set your percentages and you go from there. And if you want to change it over time, feel free to do so. You don't have to call. It's just a plus or minus. Um, but yeah, so, and honestly too, what I have my pods in now may not be the same in a year. We'll just see how it, how it flows, but that's really where I started out. And that's what I'd recommend anyone else starting out doing. Just kind of check it out, see what you like, and go from there. Right, 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 right. Very interesting. Have you have you rebalanced, I assume, since you started? A little yeah, bit. The, the, a little the, bit. The, the rebalancing. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically just like making sure you're back at the percentages you, you want. I think uh, another another problem is if I didn't like play around with it and kind of do I'd never know what I don't know. So right. even if I rebalance it and I mess something up, like, hey, I can I can recover, right. you know, because right, it is right, a long term right. thing for me. You know, I'm not just looking at cash out and borrow a million dollars and you know, yeah, 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 so, yeah. Have you? But it's, it's something new. Have you thought of and so yeah? So the, what about the? Uh, let's go from M1 is is also technically more stocks, maybe REITs if you're into some of that stuff. But yeah. Mm-hmm. M1 is primarily stocks, and then your other category here, stocks, is like very much outside of M1 funding. Um, yeah, yeah, or I'm actually in like my Weeble or my Robinhood and, and I'm actually buying something. Or... Yeah. And so you're very hands on with your investing, obviously, since November, right? This is this is you like learning since November, I should say, as well, which is great, by the yeah, way, right? This is pretty cool. Um, well, like so... I said, I've had an account with Robinhood since like 2017, but I, I just didn't do any of the work. You know, I played around with it, I flirted with it a little bit, but I didn't really say, like, all right. What it, realistically, you know, like in my job or something, like, what do I want to do? And I need to come up with some sort of a plan. Mm-hmm. But you're very, very hands on with your portfolio from what it seems every month, right? right. Um, do you ever consider any like robo investors or any type of uh, like automated investment services? Um, I, I, I definitely dabble into it. I said, I'm at this point, like, I'm, I'm not closing my ears or anything i'm just at least hearing it out and just checking out and seeing what it is um but yeah i'm not i'm not too opposed with it mm-hmm. yeah very cool very cool but no i mean that's it's, like, it's, yeah, so that's the reason why i like the whole digit thing because it's, it's just saving me something in the back i don't even have to worry about it so i do i do like that that simplicity in my life one less thing to worry right. about and with digit does it invest in its own kind of investment platform itself like it, how does it that's the thing it doesn't have any sort of uh, best platform. Hey, that's pretty kind of smart though, honestly. But right. they don't have anything. They're strictly just taking it and it's like saving for a rainy day, you know? So for the investment part of it, do the, you have to connect that with another investment account? If I want to invest with Digit, it's me like withdrawing the money from my Digit account to my bank or transferring it from it from uh, the account to my bank. Gotcha. So I mean, um, there isn't any sort of investing tied with Digit. It's just me having money automatically come up. Just like it's like a savings account too, but it's a separate savings account from any of the primary banks I use or any of the 
banks that I use for like my work or health insurance or anything like that. Yeah, so I'm on Digit's site. Yeah, let me come back to this just to see and learn a little bit more, right? Let me uh, pull okay. it back as well. And again, it's interesting. So on Digit, it's just like, prepare your money for the years ahead starting today. Digit helps you invest towards all your goals, begin small. This I clicked on the investment, right? So this is under investment. Gotcha. Um, it does have you you know, click conservative, moderate, or aggressive. So I guess based off of what you're comfortable with or not comfortable with, but you don't pick individual stocks. They match you with a diversified portfolio of exchange of ETFs, exchange traded funds based on your risk level. So you're saying from your experience, this, this is outside of digit itself, or do you not mess with this at all? Really? I was going to say, Hey, you're teaching me something new. I didn't know they were doing it. I'm looking like, wait, what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, cool. So we're learning together here. Yeah. So, so okay. yeah, so simple daily investments. So yeah, it's basically, I guess when, just like what they do with the saving, um, you're able to also potentially turn on this lever here and have them invest for you uh, into these, into these okay. three categories. Again, like based on, um, your risk tolerance i didn't know that they did that i never honestly i never knew that that's crazy yeah well i guess might as well try i mean if you're paying for it yeah, so. I'm have to update it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no>. cool <laughs> cool cool all right well i'm glad we're both learning here that's what i was like i was like wait i'm sure i was surprised they weren't and i just went back to that top i had it open <laughs> um but cool and so yeah, so with Weeble, Robinhood, M1, you're all you're all over it. It's just fantastic. Um, do you know how how you learned about these platforms to begin with? Again, you said Robinhood since like 2017, so that's been a minute. Um, Twitter, honestly. Twitter. Twitter, Twitter Chris Johnson like with M1 and specifically. M2, then... yeah, and you you do start once you start getting into that network of people, um, you start to learn who knows who and who's engaging who and seeing who their network of friends and people are and who their resources are. So. You start dipping out that when you're in the comments and those things, people are talking about all sorts of platforms. And um, that's just really how I've started leveraging it. One of my favorite things to do on Twitter when there's something that's just controversial, um, I'm there with like some sort of meme. Excuse me. Some sort of meme and uh, some sort uh, of meme. a link. Yeah. yeah. Some funny that'll catch someone's eye and then a link to my Robinhood for the free stocks that people get of signing up because hey the casual fan isn't gonna know a weeble or coinbase or any of that but everyone's heard of robin hood at least so right. i get free stocks all the time from that just one night just up just paste 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 put it here put it there and even if it's even if it's months later you know i i, I got some the other day out but it's awesome like, so I, just, I don't even know who the person is so people just yeah. used your link in like a random like in the in the discord or in like on twitter where you'll just attach it to like a meme or something or mm -hmm. that's kind of a cool attach it to a meme related to it yep and people are going to scroll and they're going to stop and hey they do have to actually like sign up create an account and make the first deposit for you to get it so there is work for them to do but at least if you get someone and stack committed you know they're going to get a free stock out of it you get a free stock and I just use my Robin Hood for, for that at this That's point. That's so like, funny. It, it, That's so funny. So again, you'll basically create a meme and then attach your, like a meme that's probably financial related or stock related. Mm -hmm. And then just whatever the issue is, like I'll just do that. And, but again, that's what I'd originally started investing on. And as I learned more, I, you know, pull what I needed to pull. And it's like, now I'm going to use it towards that or like watching something, you know? Hmm. Fascinating. Man. I love that idea. That's a great, great, yeah. very funny, very funny. <laughs> um, and then cryptocurrency. So 20%, you're pretty bullish on crypto right here, at least like relative to what you're doing. It's just, it's a 20%, 20%. So, um, tell us more about that. Um, I think I read and I think I've honestly too been blessed with people that know more than me, you know? So again, I, I've learned to hate people will help you if you're willing to help yourself. Same thing. I can't hate when someone calls me with an issue. And they haven't even tried to begin to resolve it. So I do ask friends, ask family members, ask people that are older than me, younger than me, people that have been doing it longer um, than I have, you know, what their thoughts on the things, or I come up with my, my research and we'll sit down, we'll have a conversation like this about something that either of us didn't know about or one of us may have known about. And from there, hey, I write down, take my notes and, you know, go do my research and kind of go from there. But um, again, it's all about just diversifying for me, just, 
because it's, it's all fun you know it's all it's fun yeah what um for, first off so i assume you're on coinbase from what you've said already mm -hmm. uh what kind of crypto are you in right now um a little bit of everything. I haven't really been going too heavy with uh, the crypto investing in the last recently because, like I said, I'm still really trying to get this this M1 thing going. Uh, and I know that just even with the hookup, just having that work in the background, I know I know how I move my money day in day out, month in month out. So I haven't really been going too too crazy. I have all the ones that you have, and you know, but. Nothing too crazy. I don't know any super deep, dark, low key ones. Right, you know, right. But... So I assume like Bitcoin um, is probably one that I, are you in that? Um... Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, Cardano. Uh, gotta have to go because it's just so funny, man. Yeah. I was, I made like little t shirts and stuff too for like Doug Day. So a couple of those. It's like, nice. I just love it. It's like, cool, yeah. You know? And I just, Pulled them after that day came and gone. It's pulled them, but might as well, um, might as well, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, CJ does have some that he's like, "Hey, I'm investing in." I know my mom's got a friend that uh, he goes on Facebook on these super long rants about just hmm. crypto and stuff he earns and you know what he's doing. And super smart man, and you know it's, it's crazy that you know you share a meme on Facebook, you'll get all the engagement in the world, but if you share something that will help you and benefit you, like people scroll past it and they, they don't want to read it, but he gives out so much free game and, and you know some of the ones that he, he mentions too i'll look into and kind of do my due diligence and i'll uh i'll jump on I'll, I'll let i'll try not to get too crazy but yeah you'll, you'll test out the waters with those a little bit. a little bit yeah i mean might as well i mean if they're offered on coinbase or whatever platform you're buying on i mean you might as well just put in a couple bucks if you can but <laughs> yeah that's uh good for you good for you um yeah, this is pretty solid, though. I think this definitely kind of encapsulates a lot of what you've been, uh, you know, putting your head down and learning a lot about it since November. Right. So good for you. Um, so fun, man. Do you remember some of the first stocks that you invested in to begin with, like some of your first major purchases that you Ooh, were really nervous about? That's a good one. I think I can check real quick. I remember I was uh, sitting with my girl just having a drink somewhere, just hanging out. And uh, let's your... hey, let's just, like, <laughs> huh? You buy your first stock when you're having drinks, just like, all right, screw it. Yeah, today's yeah, the yeah, day. Like, today's the day. Hey. <laughs> Cause I've like, I've had it for years and just never did it. So, but you know what it was like, had like a serious conversation, like, hey, okay, really got to start setting something right for the future, right? And it's like, just here, we're in open setting, outside, it's a beautiful day outside. And uh, let's see. I know I got General Electric and then dang, I think there's another one. American Airlines is another one. This is back in November. You mind if we look it up and see where right, you're go at? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. These are the first two and it was like I think I had like twenty bucks on uh in my account and let me see. All right, GE stock, let's go back uh one year. And you're in November, so that would have been around right now. So you're up. You're up, dude. Like, let's just say random. Feeling good. I'm feeling mid, good. Mid-November, you're up 60%. Look at you. Even if it was by the it end says, of November. Yeah, it says uh, I'm up, up about 200% since November 11th. So I'm still in the green. On, and on, Wow. So on, G, on GE, that was 60 at least. But what? So American Airlines? It's across across the whole thing oh, like what nice. I have. and granted too i will say that there is a little bit of inflation there because right. they do count you know how i get the free stocks they'll count the free stocks as you're up you know you're i'm plus eight or i'm plus 16 so i got a stock that was valued this for free even if it goes up or down so but I, I will say i haven't like i haven't like pissed away my money in it you know and, and i do feel like that's i think and that's what i was saying to invest in yourself at 26 like I think my biggest misconception is that it was a lot harder to get even just started in it than, than you think. And I think that stops a lot of people when you go and give to people and hedge funds and investors. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that to say they go to school for it. So by all means, um, it's crazy. but it is fun to kind of get your hands dirty and at least learn where, where your money's going yeah, more towards, yeah. you know? 
amazing yeah 100 percent. and then again I mean, when you're able to pick stocks like american and ge that you know you, you knew they were down a little bit right you know you had to be hey, going up i just recognize the names it's like that's that's really what it is i told my little sister to get started and i said hey just look at what you throw away in your trash can every day look at who, who owns that company you're buying it someone else is buying it you're always complaining it's out at the store so start there and you know kind of reverse it back you know, I, there's a, what is the name of the company? I, I called it out on another show as well, but I'm going to try to figure it, remember it again. It was, um, I forgot what it is, but it's a UF started, uh, somebody at UF started this company where every mm -hmm. time you make a purchase, you buy a dollar worth of that company's stock. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I did see that. What was the name of that it's, company? It's, it's genius. What was the name of that company? Um, of a, I uh, you purchase that. I don't remember. It's all right. I'll I'll, I'll go past it unless you're able. It's to called Griffin. Griffin. G R I F N. I was talking to shop at bought a Starbucks coffee. You know, one dollar of it. Yep. G R I F I N dot com. Yeah. One F. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Dude, I love these guys. I think they're great. I'm big, uh, heavy proponent of these guys. Obviously, pretty flashy website, looking nice. But, That's awesome. But yeah, dude, right love there, Griffin. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, like, you use it. I, I, I honestly, I don't. I think they're only out on the Apple Store. Ah. So what's... Anyway, I'm Team Android, so... I'm I know, slow. Team Android <laughs> over here as well. I, I... Uh, <laughs> I don't believe that they're on an Android store, like on the Android Play Store or whatever they're called right now. But yeah. That's so, good though. That's a really cool idea. Shout out to them. Yeah, I know. It's a great, I mean, it's exactly what you're talking about, right? I mean, most, this is good investing advice in theory. Like you buy a company, buy a store that you shop at, you know, buy a stock from what you buy, what you buy. You know, especially too, if you're one of the people that says, you know, I'm horrible with money, I, I can't invest it, like, and but you're quick to spend it, like, hey, at least you're now getting something. That, that's a start. Something's better than nothing. Yeah. Uh, is it? Hey, only on Apple. It's not on uh, not on Android yet, as far as I'm aware. But very cool. Um, so yeah, let's bring it back here. So with your monthly investing. Uh, let's take that away. So yeah, very cool. And, and, uh, I think again, it's been, been solid so far. Again, I think you're, what was been some of like the biggest learnings that you've had since November that you can think of that you've uh, run into, obviously, again, as a relatively new investor person, who's, you know, going through it, doing a lot of your own due diligence, what are some key factors that you look for when you're buying and selling and, or looking to dabble or experiment in a new New, new new stock or app i think uh one of my biggest thing is just always i just i love dividend payments so much even even if it's like a penny i'm like awesome i you know because again like i think uh I, I i laid this out to my siblings um compounding i i encourage everyone listening to actually seriously compounding and just to have compounding calculators where you don't even have to do the math and it will show you what hundred dollars today will look like in X amount of time. And I think that's that's probably been my biggest takeaway. And that's why I've, I've been trying to spread my seed like a lot of things so I can make things just start and you know get the ball rolling on them because that compounding thing helped us I've heard a lot of rich people say, hey, you made your, your first hundred thousand and, and now it's like hey I can do it ten times again. But each time like you do it quicker. Like you know and that that's uh that's what I say. Once you get the ball rolling, it's fun and uh, it's never never losing momentum. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really fascinating, right? Like again, you put five a, a, a dollar a day, and then all of a sudden, a couple of years from now, it's just like that compounds, and then what you if it you know what you what compounds in the next month will then compound on top of that, which compounds on top of that, which compounds on top of that. It's 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 a, a snowball effect, is what it is. Yeah. Yep. And it, it seems like, yeah, that little bit's not going to do anything, but it does a lot more than people realize. Yep. And so, so very cool. So you look for dividends is your number one, anything that you look for as like a number two thing in a stock that year that you're always looking um, out for? 
that too, just honestly how I feel about the company. You know, I do look at financials. I like reading a little quarterly reports or they're just in the sea and, and um, yeah, just checking, checking their history. Like I said, I like to buy stuff that I, I vouch for and that. Uh, same thing, I think that's I think that's uh, just one aspect of just being a business owner with my brand, right? Someone buys something of mine, like I'm gonna stand behind it. If they want a return or I'm, there's never gonna be any issues, like I understand it and, and there's always room for improvement. So if I wanna buy a company, I, I look at it the same sort of way. There's gotta be some sort of value in it and um, you, got, you gotta make your money work for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, is there, is there anything that you think we haven't talked about with your monthly investing? And uh, I, Nothing I, in there. I do. You go. You go. go you go. You go. Listen, I don't want to flip it. What does uh? What would you say yours looks like for the uh, monthly spending breakdown? For mine, yeah, that's something. It, it's interesting because uh, for monthly spending or monthly investing. Both. Mysterious. Both. That that's a lot. Um, that's a, that's a lot to go through right here. So, um. When it comes to how I do it, I, I actually use a lot of Mint to break down my spending. Um, okay. And I'll actually, I'll mention it here. Let me pull up my Mint app and I can, I can tell you. Um, I will say, I will say that um, I, I, most of my money, it probably goes to refurbish it or like just doing maintenance for uh, rental properties. <laughs> so that's okay. Um, if I had to go to monthlies, uh, let me go back into, pick a month, any month. Um, February. February. 82% of my spending wow. went to home. <laughs> went to maintenance <laughs> for my, uh, my, my rental properties. Decide so how did you how did you get involved in the rentals? Uh, what, what was your process like? Yeah, um, I had a really good friend I met in Gainesville who had been instrumental in just recommending that I get into real estate, and mm -hmm. so I've been looking into real estate for a long time. Found a rental property that I was interested in, put an offer in in 2019. A whole long process nice. until. Yeah, long process until 2020 where it got where we actually closed on it, but it's been a crazy whirlwind since then, I'll be honest. And uh it does. yeah, but it's been good. It's been good. I've I've definitely seen a lot of appreciation on the property itself and the rental income and whatnot. It's been been nice, but it, the rental income just goes right back out at this point cuz the house isn't it's a fixer upper in a sense, but right. it's a nice house. It's a nice spot. Um but yeah, so 82% of my monthly month of February. Uh. <laughs> of spending specifically went straight up into uh, <laughs> uh, that home <laughs> um, so and, and rent. So r r I guess after that, uh, I'd probably say probably 75% and then maybe, I don't, I don't know how much my rent would have been in that, but yeah. Yeah, what were you gonna say? Right, I, I know we talked about um, just the whole in one thing coming up with the money. So what was your path towards it, towards buying the home or closing on the home? Yeah, I had always put a lot into back in 2017 ish, 2018. There was uh, high yield savings accounts were really good actually. You'd get like two percent plus in a high yield savings account, and so I was incentivized to save a little bit. And I'm also not a risk taker. I'm not that risky when it comes to a lot of money stuff. So I was putting a lot into savings accounts, and before we knew it. You know, I had a good chunk of change where when you think about real estate, you only need to put down five, 10, 15 percent, mm -hmm. 20 percent if you, you know, or more if you want to avoid the the mortgage insurance. But, you know, if you're only looking at a house and it's one hundred thousand dollars and you only put down five thousand dollars, you can buy a home. Right. Twenty thousand dollars, ten thousand. Twenty thousand means you need to put down ten thousand. You know, thirty thousand. Well, is that right? Yeah, thirty thousand is fifteen. Right. You know, so it's like if you do that kind of math, it's kind of like wait, if you're sa if you're saving a lot, you're stacking dollars mm -hmm. like, in your your again, even if you're investing, right? You can sell some of your investments to buy a home. Like again, all you need is to buy a three hundred thousand dollar home if you're gonna live in it, five percent down, fifteen per fifteen thousand dollars. That's actually. Yeah you know, affordable at that point. You can right. afford a home where you can afford the monthly is a different conversation with interest rates, but buying a home is actually affordable. If you, you can, you can afford to buy that property. 
And then if you're a first time home buyer, you can put as little as 3.5% down. And so, you have all those incentivize it. right. If it's the FHA loan and if you have a, you know, put down 3.5%, right. If you're going to, for a hundred thousand dollar property, all you only need to do is put down three and a half thousand dollars. That's kind of ridiculous to leverage. Talk about leveraging right. and borrowing stuff. Holy crap, right? $3,000. i will give you yeah. $4,000 to buy $100,000 worth of home and then have part of my rent go to it and everything. It's it's just right. – that's what made me get into real estate. Just like now, that Now, is it idea. strictly like a rental property or is it something that like you're – like a duplex that you're in? This specific situation uh, has a second unit in it. So it would have been okay. a duplex type of thing where I'd be able to like – That's what I'm really trying to do. It's crazy, man. I, I think that's a, the best way to go about it. Um, and then, yeah, and then again, you rent one side out and you can live in the other. It's fantastic. Really fantastic. You know, that's so how long would you say that you've sat on the idea of like owning a home? Like when did it become like, okay, you know, I'm really, or I'm really going to get a rental property? Probably I almost a year, probably thinking about it. And then... Hmm. And then a couple months, well, within that year, I was probably also looking as well, just seeing what was out there. But once I went under contract with this house, it took a whole other year to actually close, which is crazy. Crazy how long it takes. Um, yeah, the, the closing of it actually sucks because uh, that was in probate and the actual house was in a deceased relative's name. And so it took an extra oh, year. So that's how come it took a year. But, um, but yeah, again, but since then... You know, it's been fine. Like we've been able to make everything work. Um, but mm-hmm. again, I've had a lot of maintenance, a lot of maintenance. I've, I spent a lot of money on maintenance this year. In the last, I don't know, it's wow, a lot of money on maintenance. <laughs> um, hey, it'll pay off though. It'll, it'll well, because down. the goal is that you know when I'm sitting on maintenance, I can then make back over the number of however many months slash years, and then right. I, for smaller maintenance things, like what I was what I was calling maintenance is like I literally, literally like replaced floors painted i i re remodeled a little bit is really what i did yeah. that was a lot and then the maintenance stuff is like every month there might be something that pops up that i might need to get seen or taken care of and i'll take that out of like the top part of the rent so in my rent i actually like you know i what i paid to the bank then i have some extra cash flow but then i'm able to then take the cash flow out and then pay for you know again if there needs to be like a plumber called or something like that so i have another question for you so for someone that's like first starting out with um like buying their own home, uh, stuff like that. How are you learning or how did you learn how to do a lot of the repairs? I didn't, I don't. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll, I'll say that it's really like, I literally just, I just kind of went into it eyes wide open. My mom does interior design stuff. So I wasn't like, okay. it wasn't far out of the question. So I had like a right. person I could call if I needed anything, but it was more like I, first time I had a, something go wrong with some plumbing i literally went on yelp and i was like all right plumbing in the city and yeah. bang like called like looked at some reviews i was like all right saw where they were located i was like okay this one seems pretty reputable and i called them out and said hey can you go to the property <laughs> you know and then sure they went out they called me and told me it was wrong and i gave them a thumbs up or thumbs down to to do whatever it was I and mean, i gave them a thumbs right. up but i mean it was just like cool you know so doing that and then uh, you know, I did my, I installed a French drain effectively prim- almost by myself, okay, there you, go. you know what I mean? And that was pretty, easy. I was just like, yeah, that was just like a Google search, right? Just like watching YouTube videos, you know, but it's, it's definitely been an interesting experience. Definitely. What would you say you wish, you know, now that you knew when you first started the journey? What That's do you a good think question. Of... That's a good question. Um, if the monthly, if you can make the monthly work, just do it. Right, like, what do you mean by that? Uh, if you can make your principal, interest, taxes, and mortgage insurance less than what you could rent it out for, right? So P I T I is 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 uh, the the acronym. So principal taxes, P, print, P I P principal interest taxes T and then I insurance P I T I. If you can make all of that worth less than what you could rent it out for it doesn't matter what the cost of the home is if you can then rent it out and i mean with maybe some buffer for maintenance but if you're able to rent it out make monthly cash flows 
I don't care if the house is underwater if I'm still able to rent it out for above what I, right. you know, am paying the bank. Because I'm the middleman at that point, and as long as I can pay the bank with whatever I'm getting from people renting out the property, then I'm okay. And then if you want to be a little bit more risky, take out the principal from that. Because when you're paying the bank back for a loan, that principal is you paying yourself. Mm -hmm. So really, really you're paying yourself part of that mortgage insurance, mortgage payment that, you know, when people say stop renting and start, you know, paying your mortgage, like don't rent anymore. You know, when you're paying your mortgage, you're paying yourself back. Like that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the principal. And if you're paying the principal on top of that, then like, that's just money. That's in like a weird house. Houses that you buy are like weird piggy banks that you just (laughs) put in like, you know, that principal payment that you're paying down is yours you know you can take a loan against that too you know yeah sure it's a home and equity line you, of credit how do you vet people for, for like renting central renters yeah yeah there's like equifax has a service of like 20 bucks or something or 40 mm. bucks and you can split them and you can get the credit history and one of my tenants was like look i know my credit's not good and whatnot and so i was able to talk with them and understand a little bit more of their situation you know, it wasn't like a hard no, but it was just like, okay, let's talk this over. And right. so, you know, if, if I got a good vibe with that, then, you know, I felt okay. And then Great what somewhere. I did with that person was I had their employer, I called them and was just making sure that the, to validate the amount of month, money they were making month over month. And so I was able to like say, look, like that made sense. Like I was like, cool, like you're good. Um, that's cool that uh, Equifax does that. Um, you did that too. So yeah, I'm that. pretty sure it's Equifax. There's a certain, it's a yellow and black company that, um, like those are lo- they're the colors. It was like yellow and black. So I forgot, <laughs> I forgot what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's Equifax. Um, some sort of report. But yeah, man, I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward. And, uh, and like right now, I'm not paying any property management company either. So it's, it's pretty <laughs> good. I've enjoyed it so far. Um, it, it's not, I'm learning a lot, but I think if I were to continue right. to get more doors, then I'll probably have to start looking at, yeah, you know, yeah, because then it just becomes a lot. But again, this one property is very much a lot to handle and not all properties are like that, right? right? If you get a nicer place, you can, cause my first place, it wasn't that like, again, it, it has issues. Like I knew known issues. Um, but if you get a place that doesn't need as many, as much maintenance, yeah, like, again, you have to put more down because it probably is a nicer place but it, it's it's uh you don't have to worry about that as much it's more kind of get the ball rolling like you're in there and I make a roll that's a little kid my mom's realtor and she was doing the same sort of thing buying properties and fixing it up and guess who was out there you know kind of get my hands dirty you know granted i wasn't able to do everything but my grandfather did stuff too with roofing so i'm there watching him do that and you got people coming in flooring and you're, you're just watching so Dude, it's fun to, to, to get your hands dirty a bit. If you can save yourself the maintenance costs by doing whatever it is yourself, mm-hmm. wow. By all means, 100%, yes. Um, I would be doing more of that. I mean, I, I'm i not living in the same city where I bought the house. So, gotcha. I got you. you know, you. It's, it's from afar. So, That's tough. Yeah, so I got to have to be really vigilant and, you know, take people at their word about what's going on. So... Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting. It's a very interesting dynamic of what's no regrets, though. Say it again. I said no regrets. No regrets. Actually, <laughs> no regrets. There's um, no regrets. It's been pretty cool. I mean, but but it's hard to have regrets in this market right now. I'll say. You I know, got you. Like I, I got everything's you. so so up that you know, I won't necessarily think I'll have regrets yet. Come back in like a couple years, and if my assumptions worked out, then. I'm going to be even happier, you know? So. That's what I was saying, man. I, I, I wish I would kind of known what I'd know now, like way back before, like when the pandemic was first like rolling around, because I would have even like, been in an even better situation, you know? Yeah. But hey, you live and you learn. And right. at least right. it, it still kind of lit that match. But I can't complain, man. I've been having if, fun. It's know? crazy. Like, it's cool because now so many more people are focused on that, at least in our age range, I would say. Yep. We're very much like, oh, crap, this is something that I probably should have been doing years ago for across <laughs> the board, right? Like yeah. stocks, 
real estate, all the above, right? It's like, oh, what was I doing? You know, it's like, man, like I remember being, I remember being in Broward Dining Hall and at UF on campus. To, I I had a sitting at a table with a couple of people. One of my friends became our like mini broker. We'd give him money yeah. to invest in cryptocurrency for us in early 2010s, whatever, right? Which is late for some or very early for others. Like Bitcoin was like 200 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks, yeah. somewhere in that range. And I remember thinking, cause again, in college, I didn't have any money either. It was like, man, like that's too much. I can't buy one, like whatever. And it was just crazy. And now <laughs> it's like, dude, if I only just committed to it back then, you know, again, 50K would like plus at some point, right? There are also funny memes on the internet about cryptocurrency about, it was like winner of like gaming events, like land parties would get like, you know, pizza and like the last place would get like 800 bitcoins because it was like a joke. It was like five bucks back then. Like this is way, 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 way back. But I mean, it was just like, you know, nobody really thought about it or cared about it. But I mean, if you knew enough and you actually held on to something like, holy crap, you know, like it was, it was crazy. I forgot. I forgot which pizza company was. I think it was. I think it was Pizza Hut. But a guy said a Pizza Hut or Domino's. They have like a National Bitcoin Day because of the guy that had like reasonable amount of Bitcoin. He traded in for like two large pizzas, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what can you do? Like, yeah, come on. You can again. It's like you're. It's a logical progression. And one thing that I will say is like. It's kind of obvious looking back, seeing the trend and realizing that I didn't do anything about it when I probably could have or should have, right? Like, and what I mean by this is like everybody for the last decade in our demographic, right? At least I'm I'm, I'm confidently our demographic. Like we've all been talking about Austin, Texas for a long time. Austin's always been, you know, a cool spot. You know, Mm -hmm. there's South by Southwest there, they have ACL, they have like, you know, 6th Street, Rainy Street, they have all these like, all these like, like, like outgoing places, nice nature, all these things, food, right, barbecue, everybody's always talked about Austin for a long time, it's always been an up and coming place, but like, when I say always, like the last 10, 10, like, probably about 10 years, right, at least 7, and now all of a sudden the housing market there is booming because uh you know people are willing to, able to move where they want to live and austin has always been a spot now it's the spot right now it's like a, like mm. you have all the industries there where awesome. it's like damn like again like 10 years ago back in 2000 i remember talking about 2012 2013 about going to south by southwest it's like a really cool place but not even for the confet for the festival but for like the city of austin is really cool yeah it's just like damn, like Austin's a cool spot. You know, it's like, cool. Well, like if I only knew about real estate at that time and being back in 2012, like, sure. Great time to get into real estate too, right? And so it's like, but we could have seen or called Austin's trajectory as it is, right? And Mm -hmm. then you look back at cryptocurrency and it's like, okay, well, it's like a natural progression of money. And, And in a logical conversation, it's like, you look at even pop culture. I just finished watching the TV show, Mr. Robot. If you're familiar with that show, it's, it's a great show. It came out in like 2013 to 2017 timeframe and uh, somewhere in that range. And it was just like, they were talking about Bitcoin in that show. And I mean, it's not, not that that was a long time ago or that they shouldn't have. I mean, they're very, it's a very tech focused hacker focused show. And it makes sense that they're talking about Bitcoin, but just the fact that I didn't even know about it was even mentioned in it was like, whoosh. went way over my head, way over my head. Yeah. Didn't even, didn't even think about it. Didn't even like, but again, but like we could call that again, cryptocurrencies. If it wasn't Bitcoin, it's, it, and it might not be Bitcoin, but like there's going to be mm-hmm. some virtual currency of sorts. Like it's just the natural progression of, of, of money at this point. And it's just what becomes the actual adopted thing. And it's like, okay, well, there's fiat currency, which is, and we have dollars and actual physical cash. And then we're all already using credit cards and paying by our phones and doing like mm-hmm. these techie Whatever. things. It's Apple like, Watch. Well, and... Yeah. It's like, okay, well, what is the need for an actual physical dollar? Cool. But then it's like, there is need for a physical dollar, don't get me wrong. Right. But then there's like, <laughs> as it progresses, 
right now, like, again, I think it was like Mark Cuban a couple months ago or somebody a couple months ago was like, cryptocurrencies are what the internet is or was in like the early 90s right now. Yeah. Where it's like in 30, 40 years, we're going to be cryptocurrencies like, yeah, you remember when people didn't know what the internet was for? (laughs) <laughs> you know. it's like come on man we were yeah. using like dollars and yeah and it's and like we're walking around with pennies in our pocket <laughs> uh, yeah and it's just like you know it might not be bitcoin it might not be whatever right we had a dot-com boom right we're gonna have a crypto boom and whatever right we're in it might be in it right now i don't know right but we're gonna be able to adopt some of this stuff sooner than later in my mind and anyway so it's like trying to find those trends that you're like damn i knew it and i was talking with another friend it's like and the last thing i'll say is like Talking with other friends, like we're almost now at the point where we have to look at the next generation. Not True. really, we're not that old, but it's like we're getting at the point where it's like we're not the cool kids anymore, knowing like the big, like TikToks that you know, it's like TikTok isn't our social platform anymore. Like it's yeah. we're using it, right? We're a part of it. I don't, I mean, I don't have one personally, but like we we have TikTok, like our generation. Know, I've seen, yeah, but it's really like your siblings. You know, yeah, like, you know, they're like Facebook and MySpace. Yeah, and, uh, exactly, uh, exactly. Like I, like again, just like exactly. That's a good comparison. Like MySpace to Facebook to now TikTok, right? To space. console generations, which one do you assimilate with, right? Like for me, I loved. I've had all the Playstations, but you know, my main PlayStation really in high school was the PS2 to PS3 transition. Yeah, I remember getting the PS3 when it came out, being like, "This is my thing." <laughs> The fat PS3, and then they the made the one. one. <laughs> yeah, the, the fat one that was backwards compatible. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That they're, was special cool. edition. Yeah. With the disc it's, and the Blu ray player, because Blu ray was brand new too. It's crazy. If you would spend like three grand on like a Blu ray player at Best Buy, like camping out all night, now like I watch it on my Xbox. <laughs> you know, like... and, and it's like, <laughs> but you know, we see these trends, right? You could look at Netflix, right? Easy comparison. You have physical video vhs's right that came from something else previous to that i'm sure right that then transitioned to a digital medium but then to a a disc so the the actual form factor went from a thick vhs to a small compact disc that was then able to easily be mailed and then the internet was starting to become a thing where people were consuming content via the internet and then youtube video content on the internet was up but then again where it happened to cds and video content and blu-rays right now it's digital like it just we see these massive trends and if you're able to find a trend and understand it and really understand it it's just like that's where you're going to be able to make the money really if you're able to find and pick stocks like that that's the exciting part i want to run something by you too semi related to that how okay. like you're, you're saying there are trends and you, you got to find where where uh where try and try try and try and locate the trend okay i was talking to a friend of mine the other day and i was like you know one thing that the pandemic did, and it'll be interesting to see, um, I don't know what type of way they can quantify this, but um, the pandemic forced a lot of people to go remote. It forced a lot of, it shook everything up in the entire world. You know, the way businesses operated, the way you did sanity, the way you do timing and scheduling and production. It, for, it forced everyone, even with my business, I was like, hey, I, I need to do, I'm gonna do something different. Like, at one point, I was like selling like masks when you couldn't go and buy a mask. I would crush them and call, you know, I was like, screw it. You gotta, you gotta. So, what I don't understand though is like, you see, now there's, you know, Zoom and there's Microsoft Teams and Facebook's got one and all that. And Skype had like the league, and I know there were platforms before them, but like, how did they, they how did they that fumble that bag? Like, how, I just, I, I don't understand it at all, right? What, yeah. what, are, what are your thoughts? What you say? Skype is the present day TiVo. You remember it's TiVo? Not... Like oh, yeah. TiVo had the the whole thing wrapped up in a bow. Like they had it. I forgot why I remember. Oh. I was having a conversation about how they messed it up. But like, what happened though? It, you know, it be it didn't. It wasn't. With with this, there was definitely something that happened around Zoom that was able to really capitalize fast like yeah i remember zoom being a thing that like before the pandemic that i used a couple times right but i think they just had an easy 
user focused interface. interface that probably made it so that grandma and grandpa could get on a call f- easier than having to create a Skype profile probably. Password. So here's the thing, Skype. Happening. Let's let's contextualize this in as well. My let me think about this. My first time using Skype was when I I had a girlfriend of was long distance. <laughs> All right, back in like high school where the only time I used Skype was basically to video call and I am right. pretty much exclusively. It was back, Skype was really created when like, in my mind, back when like AIM was just be a thing, right. you know, back when like first online chat rooms and chat bots, kind of whatever were, were starting. Something. And I think that's where the interface graduated from, where I'll tell you this, this is actually a really interesting I was talking about this with somebody, I think in episode four, it was just my the previous, previous episode was Skype, people who use Skype, like I use Skype every day for work still, not mm-hmm. as much anymore, we're, grad, we're transitioning to Teams, but I use Skype almost every day for work. Yeah. The interface with Skype still sucks. <laughs> All right, in my uh, personal opinion, right? Not great. But it is we're going to teams where it's a lot more intuitive still by Microsoft at this point as well, probably from some company they acquired, I'm sure. But I mean, still same company, but and again, going to teams and also zoom is another competitor, like other people use zoom as well. Right. But in within our corporate corporations, large corporations like to trust other large corporations. Right. Cause right. the 1% of the 1% of the 1%, right. For like, like, let's right, just shake on. some hands and you know, yes. So we'll make it work. Yeah. So, I mean, so that makes sense of, again, the, the adoption to Microsoft teams, but then for the majority of startups and other people like zoom makes sense because of that interface and that be, mm-hmm. is what caught up. Right. Same thing with, 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 uh, uh, Robin Hood too. Yeah. Like, why didn't E-Trade or Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or some of these institutional investment platforms catch on either? It's because when you see these you, these interfaces, they're so just they have so much Charts going and on. and lines and maxi. There's so and much going like, on. Yeah. It's complicated, and you don't know what you're pressing and you can mess things up really fast whereas if you look on robin on your phone it's just buy sell with a stock line and it's super straightforward right. intuitive that i think in my you know how many you know ex, ex, experience i think is what made the difference with robin hood and investing and zoom and video conferencing yeah i think that's really what it came down to just their adaptability they, they so adapted, like but they, they started at different times where the people who were using them had already adopted these platforms. And if they were to make a huge UI change, I they wouldn't you. be able to make that transition or it would break stuff where there was probably a – people are scared to make those transitions. And so with, with Robinhood, at least, there's institutional investment firms that are just hard into, again, like – Fidelity and E-Trade backends, and they know what they're doing, and they can do a lot of complicated, really, again, institutionalized trades on, right. again, with whatever they use on the institution side. But with Robinhood, it makes it super intuitive for the consumers, whereas, like, a thing like Skype doesn't really have that much of a backend, business-focused, commer- con- commercial side of the business. It's the same thing that Zoom really does, except now Microsoft Teams has that commercial kind right. of chat and and you know discord-esque type of platform to be able to use right so teams came out later when things like discord and slack were already around where they can get inspired and pull from right so it's so, I, I look at it as not necessarily skype dying but how teams was born through pulling from what was available in today's time and it'll be crazy to see um just all the stuff that that started now or all the stuff that that's been shaken up, you know, like the, some stuff still hasn't even come to fruition yet. It's but the ball is rolling. And, it, and like I said, it'd be cool to see five years from now, like what, what's, what's I, changed. I'm very bullish specifically. If you look into VR and AR, the future of VR and AR is going to be ridiculous. Those that I think is going to be something to keep an eye on because hey, yeah. they can take me to space. I'm sold. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to need to go to space with Elon. You can go to space with Oculus. Yeah. You know, I you, 
if you don't have a, a VR headset, I don't have one anymore, but like, if you haven't experienced VR yet, dude. Uh, I don't own one, but through my job, I got, I think it was an Oculus or an Oculus 2. We were using it for training videos and stuff like that, cool, so I wasn't cool. able to kind of screw around with it and just dude. go crazy with it, but it, it really was cool, though, just how, how immersive it is to the point where I had everyone, I had my mom try it, I had my little sister try it, you know, so you can be able to be like, Oh shit. Okay. I'm looking to that. Again, I work in gaming and I and what happens in gaming is you get some of the craziest tech is experimented on in games first in my mind. You know, you'll get mm. a lot of like VR started with games and then, you know, the money's in commercial, but you'll get some game developer people who are going to mess around with animations and graphics with platforms first. And then they're going to be the people who are going to chase the money with the commercial side and get these big mega corporations to sign deals with their platforms and education, right? Um, and so, yeah, I think that VR in my mind, I'm going to be yeah. looking and hope to look and keep an eye on this space, VR and AR, as, as early as possible. Um, that's going to be fast, especially as remote work becomes more. Think of this mm -hmm. trend, right? More remote work, less interaction with other coworkers opportunity for vr to get more uh adopted and then be able to meet in virtual worlds and environments it'd be kind of sick <laughs> look at that trend. Like we're like, all at teams we're like, gonna come back to this conversation in 25 years it's not gonna be in the next 10 Might maybe in big. the next 10 10 to 20 years and we're gonna all be seeing remote work be super normalized and we're also going to be able to see how not only remote work is normalized, but then meeting in VR headsets is going to be normalized as well. Having full conversations. I remember many conversations I've already had virtually with other people around the world. Through VR headsets? Through VR headsets. Through VR headsets. Say, not, not, what would you say? Not like, again, I'm not seeing their face like this, but I can see their interact, like their... There are there's technology in Oculus where they can see your interaction, your your expressions mapped through an avatar, and then I'd be in a virtual world that I can then mess around with people via an avatar. That's cool though. Kind of messed up and like and, kind of and scary, does... but also really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it does give that 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 personal aspect, you know, like we talked about it in some of our work meetings. We're like, hey, we have moments great, and there are all these benefits, but you don't have that experience where hey you get off the call with someone someone went wrong hey so and so dave how would you handle this or you're not like overhearing people's conversations about stuff and you, you your, your mind does pick up on a lot of that stuff that's you know, working in the background but yeah it'll be i wrote down the date uh, yeah and, let's, uh, let's check, let's check on this. it yeah it's, again it's, I, it's exciting even yeah. with like the autopilot and, and all of that you know it, it, it's it's For crazy cars and, and driving yeah we all knew dude elon musk was in iron man 2 talking about an automated plane with tony stark but i mean he was in iron man 2 talking about you know his car like it's like we didn't see tesla come out of nowhere like it's been around right. you know it's like right. we've all been talking about it and I've been in like the little O3, like baby, uh, uh, the baby roasters. Cause like I said, I put the out old, yeah, the OG the roasters. So I just like that. Like they're, they're cool. They're cool. And the coolest I part about. Speed, yes. Yeah. Need for speed, speed for too. Sure, for sure. Um, the coolest thing about Tesla in my mind though, isn't actually that they love, isn't their cars actually. The coolest hmm. thing is their batteries. Mm -hmm. That's I think where the money's at. The bat their cars are only going to be as good as their batteries once the other auto manufacturers catch up with their with their cars Good to finish yeah i mean once once the other exactly and then once the um you know once their other auto manufacturers get on their shit with the you know electric cars then it's like okay well how good are tesla's batteries and then not only that but can batteries also power homes and then can they sure. have their solar power panels, right? They do have their solar things. Then yeah. they have the solar powers complementing their batteries that then complement the power of the homes, which then can charge the cars. That's the vision of Tesla in my mind. He's thinking big picture. He's he's nuts, man. Insane. He's nuts. And that's just one of his like seven companies, right? <laughs> like the boring company where so, they make yeah. flamethrowers. Yeah, like, exactly. Exactly. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, dude. So it's been a, it's a, it was a good conversation, man. I appreciate you flipping it a little bit here, but let's, let's bring it back a little bit here. Let's bring it back. <laughs> let's bring it back. Um, cause we still have a little bit more to talk about. Um, 
<laughs> Appreciate it. Again, if you have any, let's let's get through this. If we still have more to talk about, let's let's go through it. Let's uh let's show up your net assets here in a second. Um, so with your net assets, you you see it come up. Uh. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's bring it, bring it back, because that was a good conversation. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so yeah, dude. First off, obviously, was there any last words on your monthly investing that you wanted to talk about? No. It was pretty good. No, no, no. The, what I'll, what I'll do with wrapping up that portion of my, my my thought process real quick was like looking at the trends over time and seeing what's happening right now and seeing how we can already call what trends are happening in the future and finding right. where does what is that space that you can see building right again just like that vr experience right then if you are right. an ar is coming up soon is like really here i know a lot of ar people right now um talking about again like that big vision with elon musk and tesla like sure the cars are what's going to sell and drive word of mouth but it's the batteries and the solar that's also going to drive the big business you know like where are those again like what are those trends with 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 old platforms like skype now you know failing to you know new platforms coming on board like teams then you know teams is now the new age mm -hmm. because skype and working in skype sucked because again if i wanted to work with people on um on a powerpoint a microsoft powerpoint i couldn't because i had it would be a local like a local file and right. then whereas now teams you're able to actually have share your screen sh and... well the sharing the screen but also in teams you can also share documents like in google drive mm -hmm. Right, like Google stuff is also badass too, right? Because in Google Drive, yeah. right, again, like everything. Yeah, I mean, and and the thing with Google is like a lot of other companies, the big corporations, don't like Google and you know don't like Google Drive because it's a little bit unsecure or unsupported, or they just are in bed with Microsoft potentially, you know. And so it's like, <laughs> you know, you have all, all the these, money, Joe. right? Exactly. So it's like you have to figure out like where that's going. But I, I ultimately think like that trend with Google Drive wasn't being followed by skype and so skype was doomed already but now going from google drive to microsoft teams it actually makes it a lot easier a lot nicer so that progression you. you know so it's that trend right and so skype i probably would have you know stopped you i never would have used it anyway if i wasn't forced to but now that they have teams it actually makes it a nice a lot easier to then combine aspects of again like zoom google drive uh, Slack and other of these like collaboration companies. Right. That's where that kind of comes. Anyway, so like as we continue investing and deciding where we put our money, you know, that's where you have to think about. Okay, well, where are those clear trends in the industries we know a lot about? And for me, like I again as a gamer, um, these posters like not 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 the Hulk. You know, you're already able to <laughs> see. You know, this guy right here. That's VR. That's VR. You know, like I love VR stuff. That's you know. Uh, Woody and that's your uh, way. I gotta look into it though. Yeah. That, that's anyway. that's a that's an idea I haven't I haven't yeah. considered too much. Yeah, yeah. Buzz Lightyear, by the way. That's what that's what I meant to say right there. That's a, a, a UF football. Anyway, it's distracting. But yeah, I mean, it has to be like that. Those trends, and again, it's like those trends. If you're able to again bet on what you believe is going to happen, that's where you're gonna probably find a lot of that value. Hopefully, over time, you yeah. might not be the first, but you know, marijuana companies you know happening before our eyes like it was a massive boom back again a couple years ago mm -hmm. but as marijuana continued to get legalized like people more and more people are be are behind stock pots now like yeah yeah i just bought right. you know some of these other things right so diversify 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 yeah <laughs> you only yeah. got to be right once I only got to be right once exactly yeah and don't exactly. uh don't play with money you're willing or you're not willing to lose and yeah you doing yeah. it like that you're you're okay yeah, okay. yeah. So with that, we'll close out the section on the investing and let's flash up <laughs> yeah, the net assets. And uh, I felt like that was a better close than what we did before. I was like, ah, yeah, I didn't want to end on that. It was a pretty hard, hard left turn. But yeah, that was uh, the thought. I'm glad we, we spoke about it, though. So cool, man. Let me go full screen here with everybody with your your net assets and uh, feel free to walk us through some of this right now. I'll say a lot of this is kind of just bare bones. Um, I've, like I said, I'm, I've been in the process of moving, so I haven't been able to just like sit and really uh, play with it. So I said, these are values that I'm looking at for now. And as I take the time out to organize my stuff and even go back more so into my business, 
aspect of it too and start separate that a lot more from my personal stuff i'll be able to update this chart so this is just some for me actually honestly because you're saying you're gonna make a graphic and they look awesome so thank you nice. for doing that <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly gonna print these and see cool. at the end of the year like what what were the the actual values set some targets and it and that way the, it, it goes that's what i'm telling you man it people should really do this man people should really do it cool because you got to think about it and you'll see growth yeah. you know yeah. you see growth and you know, hey, in another year, you'll come back on the show, and then you will see, you know, what's changed. We'll have a cool comparison. I was like, damn, dude, I didn't know anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, but again, it's that it's that process, right? It's all about that, yeah. that learning and uh, you know, incremental, you know, incremental improvements. You know. Yeah, I'll fail a thousand times, man. Yeah, yeah, but it's just that thousand first step forward is is what matters, you know. You all need there to be right that one time, right? So, or I hit the lottery like everyone in Florida seems to do pretty much every day. That's that's very true, right? But oh, <laughs> or you, you you go and you get Yada Bank, and then you have like you, you know lottery you tickets go. every day already by default. I, I again I do like pushing them because I I do think it's a funny and cool cool kind yeah. of idea. Um, but talking about lottery, I got to plug them back in again too. Maybe uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but so with these net assets you got here, right? So obviously cash is cash. But I mean, even if you know, yeah. I mean, whatever this walk us through in your words. You know, you put this down. This is how you at least were thinking when you submitted the uh, the form. So let's. Uh, even if it might not be super accurate today, then you know, let us know. I'd say at least I know with a lot of my cash is I'm moving cash in and out, or buying this, or doing that, or trying the material. Even if I'm taking cash and like I said, to buy like my hoodies and, and some of my hats, like you gotta buy it and actually put your hands on. I don't want to sell something that's garbage because it's at the end of the day, it's my name, right? So when I just say cash, it's not really cash. It's just sitting. It's more just lose cash for me to kind of make some moves with, you know. And that's why I'm looking at more ways where I can get other ways to just kind of have something coming in. It's, it's um, for, your, for your business, right? It's it's more for yeah, more so business and. Mm -hmm. My day to day, you know, my day to day as well. But right. for the most part, I'm same thing. How you were saying that eighty two percent of your recent spending is been it's like kind of like that, where most of it is going there. This chart doesn't necessarily show that accurately, but that that's that's the thing behind that um, savings. I feel like that's a lot of the stuff that gets automatically gets withdrawn um, from. Actually, a lot of savings is my investments. So. Um, Oh, cool. And one, any of the, the, the crypto apps, any of the stock apps, anything like that. Um, and also kind of like saving for rainy days as well, too. I know that I like to go on trips. Uh, I like to have fun and do experiences. So it's kind of that. It's just like a bucket where, hey, I'm going to set this aside. And even if I'm in a pinch, like I do have some fun set aside from there. Mm -hmm. um, and then get yeah, retirement HSA, that's stuff that's just coming out of my accounts, um, whatever else I got going over there. And crypto stocks, again, those are still kind of loose, but uh, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. I mean, again, just having that diversification, making sure that you're, you know, experiencing and learning, right? Ultimately. Right? I can't yeah. reiterate it anymore. Like, this activity at least made me, made myself more aware of at least where I think I'm at or where I'm targeted to be at than I was like a day before because I'd never been forced to like, put it out so at least i have somewhere i can see like hey this is where i'm at and we'll see what the actual is yeah that'd be we do that for a later so end of the year i'll see like hey what i'm what am i really at totally 100 percent, man and i think that this is going to be i'm excited to have you back on at the end of the year and see where you're at right i think that that would yeah. be pretty cool They're pretty cool to should see. be fun yeah 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 what are some of your uh your goals then right and like at the end of like for another like one three and five years out tell me more about that um the next year definitely look towards doing something in the house getting a house getting a property even if i'm doing i told you that that beach parking thing is so gold and i know that a lot of the areas are bought up or something even a parking lot somewhere where i can put a meter on it and um because then i'm not really paying too much maintenance so that or a property uh, on top of that, I'm looking at getting my business uh, income up, of course, always going to grow that. Um, and I think three years from now, 
definitely have some houses. And nothing they got on this for the one year, the vending machine things. I think that's somewhere where I've gone to, even at my current apartment complex, I knew at my place I lived at before, there've been so many nights where I just really wanted a Gatorade. I didn't feel like going to the store. And you know, at the pool, they had a vending machine. They've gotten a reason about my money to the point it's like, if you can't beat them, join them. You know, you can do the simple maintenance on them. You don't have to buy any crazy machine. So even getting a couple of those set up over the next year to just kind of get that ball rolling, uh, there's that. You just gave me a crazy idea, dude. Wow. What, what is if, it? If you own an apartment complex, right, and you're getting rent month over month, and again, you put a, a, a vending machine, you own the vending machine too, just like you're owning like a laundry, a coin laundry. Dude, wow, that's so, it's like money on money on money right there. That's kind of crazy. You just blew my mind. You set them up and you, you, you get a bar room, check them once a week, sock them, fill them, even pay if you got a little sibling, pay your sibling a couple bucks, said, hey, sock these, whatever. And hey, it'll pay a bill at the end of the day. You know, that money just doesn't pay my car note. Like, hey, I don't have to worry about my car note ever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, that's where I'm at. Um, three years houses and, and, and five years, five years time, I want my business income to just fully exceed whatever my salary is. But my goal in the next five years is to push my salary as high as I can. So it's uh, it's an arms race, to say the least. Because like I said in my, my bio thing, I really do want to get to a point where I have something I can pass down. And also, you know, hire and employ my siblings to run aspects of it. It's like, hey, if you do the job, you get paid. If you don't do the job, I'll either do it myself or pass do it. But at least they have, like, the option. Because a company is not going to give you a fair shake. People, that's why, that's why they tell you not to talk about money anyway, because they don't want people to know that they're either underpaying you or, mm-hmm. and it's, it's crazy that people, people don't know their worth, honestly. So definitely. 100%. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. And then, um, yeah, I think, I think that's awesome. That's awesome. And when we're looking at the current market as it is right now, um, what are your current thoughts on, 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 again, I know that you're relatively, well, I mean, seven months in, eight months in investing, right? So not necessarily new, new, but I mean, right now your current <laughs> thoughts on, on the market and are you still, uh, like, how are you, do you have any specific strategies that you're actively looking to implement moving forward? With regard to the stock market? It was in regards to the stock market and other markets right now. Obviously, within real estate, we've been talking about that's like a, on the plan, but primarily with the stock market. But if you see other things within crypto or metals or other asset classes as well. I say my method has always been like I do ribs low and slow, you know, never get low and slow, too like high end and, and, and bought into whatever you're seeing, whatever you're hearing. Um, so I think honestly, honestly, man, I think the universe works in really serious ways. And there'll be things that, like you said, that TV show was mentioning something several years back and you look at it now. Like sometimes I hear, I see things and I just do my own digging at that point of, I think it's something that I see some sort of future in. I'm like, hey, I'll go, I'll put what I feel like I can lose in it and, and go from there. But um, that that's really kind of always my implemented plan. And again, as always, the dividends, because I do like just having those rolling in, even if I wanted to get to the point where I'm, I'm actually able to just like get a physical check from the dividends, mm-hmm. you know, with that, like that's, that's what I want. Cause yeah. then, Hey, that that's coming in four times a year. You put out towards whatever. Um, yeah. Just, just trying to make sound investments and, and, and honestly just learning more. I know there's still so much for me to learn and uh, learn more. And then just writing a little ebook thing about my experience, like, Hey, how to not lose money in the stock market or, or, investing for dummies or you know like it's something yeah, just to yeah. share just to share my experience though um it helps someone that started in a position similar to me like kind of get their feet wet so I'll, I'll just be straight up with you honestly you know yeah i love that love that very excited to uh to have you back on in a year with your ebook and everything and uh <laughs> be able to <laughs> to to share how the progress you've been making has uh, has been coming along um, it's in the universe now so yeah you're saying it it's you know it's gonna come back you never know um, master manifestation with uh the stocks and the dividends right are there any specific ones you like the most Favorite um ones? i like et a lot um energy transfer et um 
I don't know. I, I mix them around. I think I think I'm at that point now where I'm still not even getting anything super crazy, you know, but I'll talk to you. Dang. Almost six percent dividends. You're not joking when you say you like that stock. Holy crap, look at this stock. Oh well, I guess in the last year it's been true since November at least. That's actually since November. Let's see, dude. No, it's, this stock's treating you well, dude. It's been, and you know, it's like, hey, once I got it, I've been, but dude, up eighty percent with six percent dividends. That's really good, dude. Hey, really good. it's doing what I needed to do, you know. And and I, I tried to honestly, you're asking about um ways I'm trying to implement it. I've been also trying to bring down like cross all averages by saying like, hey, every week for certain certain apps, even with my Sorry, I'm sorry, I, the motorcycle. I did hear that. I did hear that. <laughs> but even with my Coinbase, I'll have it set on certain cryptos, like, hey, buy $5 of this every Friday, you know, and, and just even it equals up to like 100 bucks a week or whatever you want that it might to be, like, do it like that. The M1, I'll have it auto withdraw this and, and kind of set it up like that. I think that that's that's the life hack because again that that little bit does add up even if you're not always catching it on an up day or a down day you know at least you're mm -hmm. still investing in it and see where it goes right dog cost averaging is is super important you know especially if you're just trying to just get in again uh what do you say like your ribs like low and slow low, low and slow <laughs> low and slow dollar cost average low and slow i love that love that another one i like are uh spg this is one that uh, this is kind of started me getting into the, the real stocks and the CJ had mentioned this too, where you know the pandemic happened, everything shut down, and malls and Simon's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow, malls what a and thought. Everything, dude. Every and people are like, hey, this is the end of the mall and yada yada yada. And then lo and behold, guess what? Then the stimulus checks came out, and then the, the economy started opening back up. And eighty percent since November, dude. You've been doing well. It's it's uh it, it's it's crazy. It's just just trying to mix it back, and and that's why I like having access to quick cash. I didn't so think about quick... this, dude. I knew about Simon's Malls for forever, and I would never. Ah, uh, man, you made me and feel some regret right here. I can't take credit for this either, because CJ was posting this at I think like fifty or sixty bucks or something crazy years ago, and even at ninety bucks, he's still posting it and. But he, I like your outline too, just how many shares of what he has, what it, what his dividends are going to be. Not of all of his investments, of course, but for certain ones that he that he talks about a lot. This is one that he mentioned, and so when I looked into it, I'm like, that makes sense. Well, just with the election right here, from before the election to like the results of the election, well, bam, sixty to eighty, and then just kept going up from there. Wow, dude, wow, good, good for you. Talking about. Uh, yeah. Sorry, talking about Austin, Simons owns a place called The Domain. Hmm. And it's just like, it's an apartment mall setup. It's like all you can, it's a highly dense office, retail, and residential center owned and operated by Endeavor Real Estate, but it's it's Simons Mall. It's really crazy. It's kind of like what uh, uh, they're trying to do in between downtown Gainesville and the campus. Okay. But okay. this is like if they were to do it right, except with like <laughs> national brands, you know, I got instead you. of, you know, wherever else, whatever they're also trying to I do. I'll check it out. I haven't been to Austin just yeah, yet. Yeah, owned by Simon Property Group right there. So, wow. Austin's a great man. So, yeah. And then, um, yeah. So, uh, just some cherry on top questions here for you coming your way. Um, are there any other like quirky or unique games or activities or tricks that you uh, do or use with your money? Uh, ideal could be like, again, like rounding up or down on purchases, savings, transfers, anything that could be kind of unique that might be something that is um, very much you. Nothing I can really think of. I just think, I know personally, I'm one of those people where if I see the money in my account, I'm more than likely going to spend it. Okay, actually, I got one. So okay. this, uh, I I, one thing this is gonna I be do, good. I can tell. I can. <laughs> it's simple. It's I take money, um, and you know, let's say I go out one night. And it's like, hey, I got forty bucks. That one of these forty bucks tonight. I go out. Let's say I get back home. 
ready to go to sea or check my pocket. Like, hey, I still have 20 bucks in my pocket. What I do is I'll take the money and I'll put it in the jacket of one of my suits. Because I'm not always wearing my suits out. I'm working from home, so I'm wearing a suit. It's either a special event or something like that. So at that time comes, it could be a month, it could be a year, it could be however long is when, or however long it takes for me to wear that same suit again. When I come back, it's like you're just like checking your pockets, like, oh yeah, I'm good. And you just find like cash. And it's it saved me at times too, where I didn't budget my money correctly. And like I'm in a pinch and you know, I overextended myself for the business and like just need a couple bucks and just like get some gas, put some food, for, you know, buy some food for the week. That's why meal prep is so awesome. I'm making a jambalaya for the week to just like cool. And uh it it saved me though. It, it it's honestly saved me. Um another thing I uh have a I like Hellcats. I started a YouTube channel on that's an extension uh of itself kind of. But uh, it's called Hellcat Hooligan, and the very first video you have to check it out. Actually, yeah, I'll just send you the Hellcat link. YouTube. Ah, uh, I haven't. What's uh, your channel? Oh, you don't want to know? Don't want to announce no. just yet? No, no, I'll show you it. I haven't gotten my followers up to the channel enough where you can search YouTube.com/slash my uh, my domain. But I'm gonna I'm gonna send you. Well, yeah, I mean, me neither, right? But what is the if I go to YouTube? What is Hang on one second. I'm going to send you a link on Facebook to the channel that'll just take you directly to it. It just takes way too long to search. I'm not, I haven't made it big just yet. Oh, let me see. Let me uh, pull that back up. But the very first video I did was me saying, hey, not a position where I can just go out and buy a Hellcat and pay for all the things that comes associated with having a Hellcat. But this is something that's a goal of mine and you'll watch my journey as I do it. And it's, I've started on my desk here. There you Let's go. See. Let me, let me see, so, see what you're about to share with the camera. Oh, uh, the Hellcat fund. And I just put loose change and money in it instead of date to see so, but even that little thing too, there were times, same sort of thing where it's like, nice. hey, so have some money set aside. So, little savings like that. Very cool. Yeah, man. I love this. I'll subscribe. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give you Appreciate a quick, well, bam. Hit that red Watch subscribe Watch those eyes, hit that notification bell. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Tag a friend. <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody, you heard it here first. Hellcat Hooligan. I love so we'll the name. I'll do the nastiest burnout. Of the dark you will serve, I promise. Nice, nice, nice. Love that, man. Cool, 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 cool. And uh, let me come back to this. And uh, love the plug right there. So, um, okay. and then uh, do you have any, or I should say what is, right? But what is your guilty pleasure? Um. You know, we've just spent the last, two and a half plus hours talking about money stuff uh do you what is your guilty pleasure that you know if you were to uh, splurge what is it my thursday's on the beach man i go have a few drinks play some volleyball talk a little trash and then you got to eat that's it like the dinner after the you're just covered in sand you're sitting outside there's like live music and everyone's just hanging out you know some people are up dancing kind of doing their thing but you're just sitting with friends just talking about life and what whatever the day may bring talking about the games you know you've seen the sunset that day so like life's good like that's that's only my guilty pleasure and at one point i was yeah sorry continue huh? you, you go first at one point i was playing maybe four or five days a week you know it's like if you're doing that four or five days it's add up so normally that's my thursdays if i am gonna you know most thursdays i just play and go home since i prep food i probably won't go out but that's that's not my go-to pleasure. Dang, Thursdays at the beach playing volleyball, man. That sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Yeah, right. I don't remember talking about volleyball with you much, and you know what? Is it new? Volleyball uh, a new thing with you? Since I moved down here, when I did when I lived at UF, I, or when I went to UF, I did play a little bit with. Uh, I don't know if you remember my friend Joseph in the tagging. Yeah, of course. He uh he played for the club volleyball team. Yes. So yes, yes. He'd go to Broward and play, and he'd always try to like show out. But like 
he may be more skilled than me, but I was like, when I like him still, I just make up for it and like athleticism. <laughs> so I'm yeah. just like out here. So. But yeah, since I've moved down here, I've I really tried to play more and do some twos, tournaments, and stuff like that. Well, next time I'm in St. Pete, I'll hit you up. We'll uh All right, I'm done. Let me know. Gotta gotta fight. Let's take it all the spots. Fight. Yeah, I love that. Very excited. Very It'll be excited. a lot better than two, so yeah. I'm working on my sets. That's the weakest part of my game. And beach, same here. I mean, I'm an indoor player, so I mean beaches, oh, okay. beaches like I don't know what I'm doing with my feet. You know, there's so much. To I do. can only do beach. I just love the, the elements of it. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just playing on grass the other day, and it was just like it's not the same. You know, it's just like <laughs> you just can't. Yeah. It's not the same. Like it's hard to dive on grass. It's just not. Anyway, cool. So Thursdays uh, at the beach are your guilty pleasure. I love that. And then um, I'll say, is there you're driving cross country? What music are you listening to? Um, a little bit of anything, man. Um, so some R and B, listen to some jazz, lo-fi beats. Had a church music going, some rap going. Have a podcast going. I literally drove to Outer Banks, thirteen hours. I had a little bit of everything going. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. Um, but yeah, a lot of time I like I like a little jazz, a little lo-fi beats, just. Just something casual where I'm not, I can focus on what I'm doing. If I listen to a song that's too hype, I'm like not yeah. paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. And then uh, what is your favorite book or movie? Uh, favorite book is called The Go-Giver. And I'll actually give you a free copy of this book. I have it, uh, I got it as a gift. I have like a, a PDF version of it, so I got it. But I've shared it with so many people and so many just genuine life lessons. It's such an easy read, really quick. It's not going to be. You said the go giver. The go giver. The go giver. Which is by uh, uh, Bob, Bob Berg. Berg. I think I and actually have read this, or, or not read, but I've seen this book. My mom told me that, like, I brought up the book to her one time. She said she'd met him um, at some event or something like that. And I was like, you know, it's such a, it's such an awesome book. I'd recommend a read for that to anyone. Open it up right here. But yeah, very interesting. The Go Giver. I've heard Would of. That be book? Pretty sure I've heard of this book before. No, Adam Grant. Parable about business and life over time. Fascinating. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Appreciate the the wreck. There. What would you say? What's it going for me? What should I? My favorite. I have a go-to movie. Book is a lot less uh, pronounced in my mind. Um, yeah. Although I've definitely, as far as like nonfiction stuff goes, I mean, I think the classic is good to great in my mind of just okay. like management and running businesses. Also, starting business, starting or start like starting a job in particular is like the first ninety days. Um, is pretty classic, uh, and then as far as movies go, uh, I love Into the Wild. Um, Into the Wild is about a story about a, a, a kid that basically, um, uh, to oversimplify it, basically ventures on his own uh, with the goal of just living in 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 nature and in specifically goes to Alaska. And uh, that sounds cool. I love, and it's one of those movies I'll, I'll go back to every few years now at this point to just watch because every time I watch it, I think a little bit different about it and I have a different perspective. Like I feel like I've grown up because I know when I first watched it, what I thought of it, I knew the next time I watched it, what I thought of it. And now when yeah. I watch it most recently, I have such different perspectives of both of those other times, you know? And, and I've definitely heard of it. I haven't seen it just yet, but I'd love to check it out. I yeah. Netflix. And honestly, at the end of the day, incredible story. Just the adventure of it. You know, that's living, you know, like there's a lot of stuff that goes on in that book. And I'm not going to try to spoil anything about it, but like, you know, we're all here. Yeah, we're talking about money on the show. We're talking about whatever, but like realistically, like at the end of the day, like we're here to live and have a good time on right. this earth. And we're trying to like meet cool people doing it. Get to that as fast as I can so I can like enjoy life. And right. So much life, man. Yeah. And 100%. And that, that story, that whole movie really just changed my perspective on a lot. 
when I was growing up. Check it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, again, like that guy might have been a little extreme and potentially a little bit, uh, you know, stupid in some of the stuff he did. But his experience, his lived experiences, were incredible, and that is valuable. That was that's that was wow to watch that movie and, and try to live that with him watching that i was on that journey with him you know? <laughs> and, and, see. and and it's it's actually what that movie is it's based off of a book which is based off of his diary like his journal it's a hmm. true story and so it's it's based in, and don't don't look him up but nice no no i watch it i like to give it the full you know yeah i'll yeah. do all the research and <laughs> 100 percent i mean i mean when i say like don't research like don't like obviously spoil it for you but it's a true story like if you look it up you'll know what happens but if you go into the movie blind obviously you're going to be able to get past that really easily and then yeah. um but like again like reading the book i'm sure is is an amazing experience too i told you i'm not doing much for this entire month of june so one of these movie nights i have to check it out so i'm always looking for something new to watch some interesting so I one of my fa- favorite movies ever ever um yeah and so you know i think that that was uh dude we've been talking for a minute man i appreciate your yeah. time on the show is there anything I else that, that you want to talk about anything about maybe your finances or your personal self that you want to share something you're most excited about something that you're looking forward to doing or anything you want to um i think i'm most excited about just the growth man I've grown a lot in the last six seven months and we're we're literally it's crazy too we're at Pretty much halfway through the year, it's June, June first. Mm-hmm. So almost halfway through. You know, yeah, but we're at the halfway month mark at least. Right, so right, right, right. So like that. So we'll see. Six more months from now is it's New Year's and shooting the fireworks and stuff. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So we'll see where we're at. Looking forward to it, man. And uh, again, for people who want to fo- to uh, find you and maybe buy some of your merch, where should they go? Uh, check out www.hookedup.us, so H-O-O-K-E-B-U-P.us. Um, I'm on Instagram at hookupuf as well. Um, and then just search me on Facebook, honestly, if you're interested and you're not in my DM being a weirdo, <laughs> like a little chat. <laughs> yeah. You be careful what but, you um, wish for, yeah. man. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> I know, right? You know, it's funny, too. I'll leave you with this. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the month is getting my Google Analytics where they show some of the, the searches that you've ranked for. And since our business is called The Hookup, it's like hookups near me, hookups in my area. I need to hook up right now. And I always get like a couple of those ranked. So I always laugh. I'm like, I love it. Like <laughs> Hilarious. So, Hilarious. Hey, man, um, people be searching, you know? they're just yeah check it out <laughs> and even if you don't buy anything from me um like you said i'm, I'm always sharing something motivational and inspiring because i'm inspired by things that i see other people doing and you know all the quotes and stuff like that when i see it i'm like but that's gone if you if you're ever looking for a good motivational speaker to get you fired up eric thomas this man's story yes. is <sighs> man i'm telling you uh uh i have a little card actually i watch one of his things and uh he's like you know it's like, uh, write down, I want you to take a pen and paper and write it down. Normally, I'm just listening and going. So, put on a card, like some notes, uh, just from the, from, the, from the topic. But what does it say? He has a way what of, does, uh, it says, what does success look like today? What does success look like today? You know, and, and he said, at, at, at the point where when it comes to people saying they want to be successful and they want to make X amount of dollars, it's like, hey, you're not going to want to, you're not going to feel like it. All the time, you, you, it's not going to be easy. You're not always going to have the answers. But what does it look like today? And just that's that consistency, man. You just do what you feel like success looks like today, and have a plan. And it all compound, it'll add up, and we'll be on a yacht somewhere, just hanging out, just having a good time, just playing some music, just looking at fireworks in another country, and just living life, you know, and, and living life. Playing volleyball on the beach on Thursdays. So, yeah you know <laughs> just, a man can dream <laughs> yeah. awesome man well again i appreciate having you on man that was 
That was awesome. I uh, really appreciate you joining for our fifth episode, right? So yeah, episode number it. five. So um, again, looking forward to having you back again in another couple of months and we'll check in and see how you're doing. I say thanks. Appreciate you giving me the platform um, for these few hours. Now I'll give you this too. Um, myself and my friend Greg, we're getting our podcast back going together. It's called Against All Odds. And uh, we're going to get that back off in the jump too. So when we do get those gears back turning, I'm going to have you on our podcast and we'll, we'll kind of flip the script and, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see Down. how it goes. I'm in. Because he's a like-minded thinker like me as well. And it would be interesting for you to kind of pick his brain and see. Because even he was more so into more of the investing aspect than I was. And he he's the one that does phones and stuff like that. So I'm looking, I'm like, hey, I'm running some stuff off of him. So we'll do that. We'll have to. Yeah. I'm ready for it. I'm down. You let me know when, and I'll be there. All right. Uh, well, I appreciate it, good, man. It's been good talking to you. It's been good keeping up. And honestly, man, I'll reach out to you. I got a couple things I want to run by you. Likewise, likewise. What we'll do right here, we're going to end the episode. So, again, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and, again, uh, thank you for, thank you so much for joining, man. I really appreciate it. But, again, for this episode, for episode number five, thank you guys so much uh, for who's been watching and uh, hopefully see you on the next one. So again, thank you guys. Keep doing big things. Have a good one, Cheers, guys. Man. Appreciate you.